Assalamu alaikum, everyone. We hope you are doing well on this 17th day of Ramadan, the day of Badr. And this is going to be a really beautiful program, inshallah. Very inspiring, very motivational. We're so excited to have you. And inshallah, we are about to get started with this program. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. My name is Tariq Al Masidi. I'm the founding director of Celebrate Mercy, and, and you're also joined by the Celebrate Mercy team members here backstage helping to manage today's program. Mashallah, I can see we already have over 100 devices connected, and I think that number will continue to rise, inshallah, as we are now getting started. Um, we have as you can see on the flyer, an exciting lineup of teachers who are joining us today. Um, we have, alhamdulillah, uh, eight teachers uh, joining us for this program. I'm sure you've seen the flyer, but we want to encourage you all to uh, invite your friends and family to tune in and join us, inshallah. As we say at Celebrate Mercy, sharing is uh, khairing. Uh, inshallah. And we know that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when you encourage someone to do a good deed, it is as if you performed that good deed. So we are, are posting this live now flyer. You can find it on our social media. You can find it in on Instagram, fa on our Facebook, Twitter, uh, the WhatsApp groups. Uh, take a moment and encourage your friends to join us now. We are streaming this live on Celebrate Mercy's YouTube channel. So invite your friends to tune in, mashallah, because everyone everyone that joins today and benefits from the program and is inspired by today's program, inshallah, in this midpoint of Ramadan, we need that push right now at the middle of Ramadan, in the middle of Ramadan. And the Badr, remembering Badr, is a great way to make our Ramadan better, inshallah. And we hope, inshallah, that you all will invite your friends and family to tune in. This is going to be really inspirational, inshallah, today. You will really benefit from this program, inshallah. So help others. Let them know to join. Share it to your Instagram story. Invite friends to tune in at celebratemercy.org slash better23. Celebratemercy.org slash better23. Or just tell them to go to our YouTube channel where we are streaming this live uh, right now, inshallah. I can now see we have over 150 devices connected, mashallah. Let us know where you are tuning in from. We are very curious to ask, where are you joining from today? I, I, my guess is that we probably have a very international audience with us because we're doing this at a time of a day that's earlier in North America than, you know, we're not in the evening yet. We're, we're actually on the day of the 17th. So let us know. Where are you tuning in from? Who are you watching this program with right now? Are you watching it with your entire family, by yourself, you know, with your spouse? Let us know. Let's share some of the comments that we're getting. We want to know where you're tuning in from. Canada, okay? Columbus, Ohio. Pakistan, oh wow, mashallah. Texas, Raleigh, North Carolina. Is anyone joining from Europe or Africa? Columbus, Ohio, okay, California. We're asking everyone, where are you tuning in from? Let us know in the comments. Chicago, watching with my nephews, mashallah. Awesome. South Africa, okay, we have the continent of Africa covered. We have North, okay, Switzerland. We now have Asia, Africa, Europe. Um, mashallah, Indonesia, uh, wow, mashallah, waiting for suhoor, amazing. We have North America. Europe, Africa, Asia covered. Chicago, Sharif, mashallah. Singapore, mashallah. That's close enough to Australia. We could we could throw in Australia as a continent there. All by myself. Brunei, Dar es Salaam, Brunei, mashallah. We get a lot of salawat pledges from Brunei, mashallah. Tampa, Florida, watching with my wife and cats, mashallah. We have a lot of cat stories this Ramadan. Everyone probably saw the video of the Algerian imam and the cat. There's a lot of cat stuff happening this Ramadan. I don't know if uh, Sidi Sinan, you have your cat with you again, but we'll see. We have a lot of cats happening this Ramadan. Um, okay, so we have now more than 200 devices connected. 
Um, India, mashallah. So we have India and Pakistan both represented here. Mashallah. Mashallah. Awesome. So we are going to go forward. Uh, we want to tell everyone that the Celebrate Mercy hashtag for today's program is CM Badr. CM Badr. So if you want to post about today's program, post you know a video clip, post a picture, post a picture of your family viewing the webinar. You know, as long as we can see the webinar in the background of your picture, we are gonna if we're gonna we're gonna be looking at social media to see who is using this hashtag today. And we're gonna be putting your names in a raffle to win a big prize. At the end of the program, we're gonna be choosing at least one, maybe two winners of those who are using this hashtag on social media. Some people love to quote our teachers. They like to send videos. If you're watching with your cat, you can take a picture with your cat with the webinar screen in the background, inshallah. But uh, make sure you tag Celebrate Mercy and you use the hashtag, inshallah. We will be monitoring social media to see who is using that hashtag. Or you could, if you're not on social media, and that's perfectly okay, especially in Ramadan, uh, you could email us your photo to photo at celebratemercy.com. Send us a picture of you guys watching the webinar, inshallah. You will be entered in that raffle. And I'm talking about a couple of really big prizes that we will announce a bit later in the program. These are examples of people who have posted to their Instagram stories or on Twitter or on Facebook, inshallah. Pictures you can see here, pictures from the webinar, quotes by our teachers, inshallah. Oh, there's a cat right there. That was from last year. Last year, we also had a lot of cats. So uh, this, these are examples, but use the hashtag CM Bedr for Celebrate Mercy Bedr, inshallah. And don't forget, as I mentioned, the Live Now flyer has been posted on social media. You want to, inshallah, encourage your friends to join, share the flyer, ask them to go to our YouTube channel. We now have, mashallah, over 230 devices connected. So we're close to probably over 500 people, around 500 people watching this program right now. For every device, it's probably, it's about two people watching on average, mashallah. So let's keep sharing and invite people to join for this program, inshallah. We are going to go ahead and start, uh, inshallah. Um, we do have a couple of goals we have for today. Uh, a few goals for today. The first goal we have is we want 100 people, 100 of you who are watching right now, to share the flyer, to share with your friends, inviting them to tune in. That's our goal. So can we get 100 people to commit? You can type in the chat room, in the chat. Let us know, can you commit to telling at least one other person about this webinar, inshallah? And it will just multiply your blessings. Whoever tunes in today, and here's this beautiful story of Badr, the lessons from Badr, the names of Badr, the dua for those who, the heroes of Badr, inshallah. You will get, you will just multiply your own blessings. The Prophet Sallallahu said, when you invite someone to do a good deed, it's as if you did that good deed. So it, you, you may be thinking it's not a big deal to share to your Instagram story, but you are sharing the khair. Okay, I see some, I see some people committing to sharing the khair, inshallah. Awesome, 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 awesome. So that's our number one goal. We want 100 people to share the khair, to share the good, to share this webinar, inshallah. Share the Live Now flyer on your, text it to your friends, your family, your cousins, you know, everyone, inshallah. We're going to go ahead and bring our first speaker, our first teacher to the stage, inshallah. That is Ustad Sinan Hafiz. Mashallah, he's going to start us off in this month of the Quran on this blessed day of Badr. Inshallah, he will start us off with a beautiful recitation from the Quran. And we will also be hearing from him at the end of the program when he will be reciting and making dua for all of the th over, over 300 heroes of Badr. Uh, mashallah, more than 300 heroes of Badr. Today is a day that is very blessed and we have to give thanks to the heroes that helped Islam to survive and to thrive and to reach us today. Alhamdulillah. Let's go ahead and bring our dear brother Sinan to the stage, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, you're muted, Sidi. 
Here we oh, go. Oh, there you go. There we go. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sidi Tariq, thank you so much for having me here. It's a, it's a blessed day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our recitation and dua in this day. And uh, I want to say Allah. something about you as well that, mashallah, since you've loved the Quran since you were four years old, mashallah, masters in business administration, we, we, we want to encourage everyone to tune into your YouTube channel as well, where you love to uh, share recitation of the Quran. Uh, inshallah so we're really honored to have you with us we're missing your cat though where's dumbo likewise wallahi i'm i'm so honored to be here so so subhanallah once you're mentioning the cat stories and what's what what, what we most of us uh uh so over the social media with the algerian uh uh, uh sheikh and the, the way he dealt with the cat i always say if you face any difficulties with qiyam al-layl try to get a cat because they're nocturnal so they they keep you awake the whole night and uh and subhanallah they go to sleep uh in the morning so so, okay. so he's taking his nap right now <laughs> so that's a hajjud tip that's a hajjud tip mashallah if you want to yes. prank a hajjud a cat will help you okay? subhanallah yeah mashallah yeah. that's why that cat was at tarawiyah yeah yeah, yeah subhanallah <laughs> mashallah okay we'll leave the stage to you to start us off with a recitation inshallah inshallah أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد كان لكم آية في فئتين التقطا تقاتل في سبيل الله وأخرى كافرة يرونهم مثليهم رأي العين والله يؤيد بنصره من يشاء إن في ذلك لعبرة لأولي الأبصار ولقد نصركم الله ببدر وأنتم أذلة فاتقوا الله لعلكم تشكرون إذ تقول للمؤمنين ألن يكفيكم أن يمدكم ربكم بثلاثة آلاف من الملائكة منزلين بلى إن تصبروا وتتقوا ويأتوا توكم من فورهم هذا يمددكم يمددكم ربكم بخمسة آلاف من الملائكة مسومين وما جعله الله إلا بشرى لكم ولتطمئن قلوبكم به وما النصر إلا من عند الله العزيز الحكيم وما النصر إلا من عند الله العزيز الحكيم يجادلونك في الحق بعدما تبينك أنما يساقون إلى الموت وهم ينظرون وإذ يعدكم الله إحدى الطائفتين أنها لكم وتودون أن غير ذات الشوكة تكون لكم ويريد الله أن يحق الحق بكلماته ويقطع دابر الكافرين ليحق الحق ويبطل الباطل ولو كره المجرمون 
إذ تستغيثون ربكم فاستجاب لكم أني ممدكم بألف من الملائكة مردفين وما جعله الله إلا بشرى ولتطمئن به قلوبكم وما النصر إلا من عند الله إن الله عزيز حكيم إذ يغشيكم النعاس أمنة منه وينزل عليكم وينزل عليكم من السماء ماء ليطهركم به ليطهركم به ويذهب عنكم رجز الشيطان وليربط وليربط على قلوبكم ويثبت بتبه الأقدام آمنت بالله صدق الله العظيم Jazakum Allah khair to our dear brother Sinan Hafiz. MashaAllah, we're so honored to have you. Those were, that was an amazing recitation. Alhamdulillah. And uh, we look forward to having you uh, at the end of the program when we recite and make dua for all of the heroes of Badr, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khair. InshaAllah, wa iyaakum, barakallahu feekum. Wa iyaakum. Uh, MashaAllah, what an amazing recitation. What did you all think? We want to hear from you, MashaAllah. We now have over 300 devices connected. In fact, yes, over 300 now. We're now at the number of Badr, mashallah. We're now at the number of the heroes of Badr in terms of the number of devices that are connected to us now. We are at 321, mashallah. So we are now at that number, exceeding the number of those who were at Badr, mashallah, which that's the number of devices connected. But I believe that we have, mashallah, if we average every device has two viewers, then we now have over 600 people tuning in right now. We need to get that up to a thousand. We want to see a thousand people tuning in, inshallah. So keep sharing, inshallah. Invite your friends to join us. We are just getting started, mashallah. We had the initial Quran recitation with our dear brother, Sinan Hafiz, and we have other uh, teachers coming up really soon, inshallah. I mentioned that we have some goals for today. I just increased the goals because I thought, you know, we're here for Badr. We should have, our goal should be 313. So we want, inshallah, 313 of you to commit to inviting someone to join this webinar. Invite your friends to join this webinar, inshallah. We also are hoping that 313 of you will use the hashtag, that we see the hashtag for this program utilized 313 times, inshallah. The hashtag is, again, CM Badr. So as you're on social media, make sure you're following Celebrate Mercy, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We're now on TikTok. Uh, mashallah, we're on LinkedIn as well. We're on Telegram as well. Um, so inshallah, just use this hashtag and post something about the program. You can post a picture of your family watching the program. Post something that the speakers are saying. Post an inspirational quote by one of the speakers and you can tag the teachers as well. These are some examples of people who posted in the past. We will be entering your name in a raffle, or you could email us your photo, by the way. We'll be entering names in a raffle to win prizes if you use that hashtag. So that is another one of our goals today, inshallah, is we want people to share the, the flyer uh, and share the link to join today's webinar and to share the uh, hashtag. And we also are hoping to get 313 new subscribers. So if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you click on that like button. And if you're not subscribed to Celebrate Mercy's YouTube channel, please do so because then you'll be in the loop whenever we release new videos and we are releasing videos daily in Ramadan or we have new live streams and we have sometimes four or five webinars a day in Ramadan. 
Alhamdulillah, you will be in the loop. You'll be notified, especially if you click on the bell, you will be notified, inshallah. Uh, mashallah. So we do have some other goals for today uh, that I will mention as well, but we're just going to keep it to this right now because I don't want to delay us bringing on our next teacher, uh, and that is Sheikh Abdul Nasser Jengda. He will be the first one giving a short talk today, giving us the context for where are we in the seerah right now? Where are we in the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? So he's going to start off with an introductory talk, inshallah, and uh, I'm going to introduce him to our audience. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Nasser Jangda is the founding director, also in, an instructor at Kalam Institute, uh, mashallah. While teaching at the Kalam Seminary, he travels around the country teaching classes, seminars, and giving lectures. He was born and raised in Texas. He currently resides there with his wife and three children. He memorized the Quran in Karachi, Pakistan at an early age. He graduated from the rigorous Alam program in 2001. At the top of his class, he attained a bachelor's and master's in Arabic from Karachi University while completing a master's in Islamic studies from the University of Sindh. And after returning home, he taught Arabic and Islamic studies at the University of Texas at Arlington, worked with various Islamic schools, and he served as the imam of the Colleyville Masjid in the Dallas area. MashaAllah. So we just got a video from Sheikh Abdel Nasser earlier today for this talk, and we're going to go ahead now and play that video now, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is Abdel Nasser Jangda from Qalam in Dallas. And I wanted to take a few moments, um, borrow a few moments of your time here today to set the stage for the greatest victory in human history, one of the most glorious moments in Islamic history, the Battle of Badr. Let's talk about how we got here and what led the Ummah to the Battle of Badr. For 13 years in Mecca, after the revelation of the Qur'an, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. The Prophet ﷺ preached and taught the message of Islam to the people of Mecca very vi vigilantly, with great sincerity, uh, day and night, far and wide, using every ounce of energy and every resource that he had available to him he preached and taught the message of Islam for 13 years in Mecca. And what was the response? Well, the response was, it started with rejection and denial. They eventually escalated the response to violence. They started committing act of, acts of violence towards the Muslims and the believers. They started torturing Muslims like Bilal radiallahu anhu, Khabbab ibn al-Arat, Sumayya, Yasir, their son Ammar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu ajma'in. <clears throat> when that still did not deter them, and the Muslims stayed string, strong on their faith, like Bilal radiallahu anhu shouting in the faces of his torturers, Ahadun Ahad. Like Khabab ibn al-Arat radiallahu anhu reciting the Quran, even when they were laying him down on burning coals and roasting burning the skin off in the flesh off of his back. When Yasir and Sumayya radiallahu ta'ala anhuma and their son Ammar continued to, they refused to renounce their faith no matter how much they tortured them. Then things turned very, things took a turn for the worse. And what ended up happening? They started murdering people, killing people. They murdered Sumayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, the first martyr in Islam, in this ummah. The first individual of this ummah to give their life for the sake of Islam was Sumayya radiallahu anha, Umm um Ammar. They murdered her in broad daylight, killed her on the spot. And when things took this turn, the Prophet ﷺ became worried for the safety and the well-being of his followers the Muslims, his community. And he sent a bunch of them, eventually almost a hundred of them, to go and live in asylum as refugees in East Africa, Habasha, Abyssinia. And 
But that still did not change the situation in Mecca. It remained dire as ever. There were multiple attempts where people tried to assault and attack the Prophet ﷺ. And on a couple of occasions, they were somewhat successful. One man choked the Prophet ﷺ from behind. Somebody came and dumped the innards of a camel onto the back of the Prophet ﷺ while he was praying. And they just would not relent. They would not stop. Finally, they went to Abu Talib and they said, convince Muhammad ﷺ to stop. And when the Prophet ﷺ refused and he said, no, I will not stop, they finally decided, okay, we are going to punish you, Muhammad ﷺ, all of your followers, and anyone who dares to support you, anyone who's not willing to oppose you. So they, the famous boycott took place, where for three years they isolated and tried to strangle the life out of all of Banu Hashim, Banu Abdul Muttalib, the extended family of the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ and his followers. And after three years of brutality, starvation, hunger, disease, death, there are narrations that talk about they could hear the crying of babies that were hungry that would then turn into the sounds of mothers crying over their dead babies. It was a really, really difficult time. And when they finally came out of those three years of the boycott, the situation still did not change. The Prophet ﷺ lost his, the most beloved people in the world to him. His beloved wife, our mother, the first believer, Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha. The Prophet ﷺ lost his protector, his uncle, the man who raised him, Abu Talib. And the Prophet ﷺ growing increasingly um, you know, frustrated with the situation in Mecca. The Prophet ﷺ wanted to explore opportunities outside of Mecca. He went to Ta'if and tried to take the message there, but they responded in the most brutal fashion. They stoned the Prophet ﷺ on his way out from Mecca for three miles and made him bleed profusely. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consoled his beloved Messenger ﷺ by taking him on the journey of Al-Isa wal Mi'raj to stay strong and don't lose hope. Not that the Prophet ﷺ ever would, but still to comfort him and console him. And then the Prophet ﷺ continued preaching specifically to tribes that were coming in from outside of Mecca during the season of Hajj. Until a small, humble band of farmers, they came and the Prophet ﷺ spoke to them and they believed in the Prophet ﷺ. They accepted Islam. And they came back the next year with more people. And they came back the next year with even more people. And this time they said, please come and join us. So the Prophet ﷺ, by the permission, the will, the command of Allah, they decided to make the hijrah, the migration to Medina, al Madina al Munawwara, the city of the Prophet. And the Muslims all started migrating there. Eventually, the Prophet and Abu Bakr made the very remarkable hijrah journey in which they didn't let him leave peacefully. They tried to assassinate him on the night he left. They chased them through the desert, trying to hunt them down. They unleashed bounty hunters upon them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered the Prophet ﷺ safe and sound to Medina. And now they established a masjid and they built a beautiful community where they could worship and they could live with safety and tranquility. But the Meccans decided they didn't want to let them have that. So they started intimidating them. They started sending little armies, small battalions, cavalry, near Medina, in and around Medina, they raided one of the gardens in Medina to just keep intimidating them, pushing them, pushing them, pushing them. Until finally, the Muslims had a community. It was the second year of Hijrah. The verses about the month of Ramadan came down. They were fasting together as a community, reading the Quran, praying taraweeh, giving charity, feeding one another. They were coming together as a community. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the enemy kept on coming at them. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed the Prophet sallallahu and by extension the Ummah by revealing the verses in the Qur'an, Surah number 22, Surah Al-Hajj. And the key verse is verse number 39, but I'll begin at verse number 38. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُدَافِعُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ خَوَّانٍ كَفُورٍ that indeed Allah will defend the believers because Allah does not love the people who are treacherous and ungrateful. And then in verse number 39, Allah said, Permission has been granted to those who were attacked because they have been oppressed. Permission has now been given to them to be able to retaliate and respond. And Allah is fully capable of helping them. Who are these people? Verse number 40. These are the people who were kicked out of their homes. Without just cause. Just simply because they said, that Allah is our Lord and Master. We believe in Allah. And had Allah not defended some people using other people, That all kinds of monasteries and synagogues and churches and masajid would have all been lost, ruined, destroyed. Wherein the name of Allah is said abundantly. And indeed, Allah will always aid those who aid Him, meaning support the religion. In Allah la qawiyun aziz. That indeed Allah is Almighty and Allah is all powerful. And so Allah sent down these verses, granting the Muslims the ability, the opportunity to be able to stand up for themselves and defend themselves, their lives their properties, and most importantly, their faith. MashaAllah, Jazakumallah khair to Sheikh Abdul Nasser Jangda for the beautiful introductory remarks. Do we have any feedback from our audience? We'd love to hear from the audience on what you thought of all. As, okay, we have one here. As usual, Sheikh Jang, Jangda is a very forceful and emotional in his presentation. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. We'd love to hear feedback from the audience on each speaker's contribution and how, you know, the gems that our teachers are dropping, MashaAllah, on the audience. We love to hear from the audience. So feel free to share your comments, inshallah. And as we've mentioned before, you can use the hashtag uh, uh, CM Bedr. As you see the hashtag there on all the slides at the very top to post about it. I have some good news that we now have over 400 devices connected. That means we have uh, over 800 people tuning in right now for this webinar. And we are still getting started. We're still early in the program. Uh, we're going to go to our second teacher very soon, inshallah. Um, but uh, just take a moment and invite your friends to tune in and watch as well. Um, I also wanted to share some other good news uh, with you guys, is that um, we talked about uh, um, that today, actually, we have a very generous supporter, a very generous donor, uh, mashallah, who said that if we have people donating to celebrate mercy today, donating to celebrate mercy today, uh, because this is the 17th day of Ramadan, this is the day of Badr, for every person that donates a dollar or more, this donor will match it up to $17,000. That means if we raise $17,000 today on the day of Badr, in honor of the heroes at Badr, inshallah, then this donor will match it and it will become $34,000, right? So that's amazing. And I want to show you guys something. We, we, we were fundraising on our launch good page and right before the webinar, we added a new giving level right here. It's You can actually give on our LaunchGood page $313 to 
to honor the, the, the heroes of Badr, inshallah. And we want, if you're planning to do this, inshallah, whatever donation you give today to help us maybe unlock this matching grant, whatever you give today, make it part of your intention that I'm giving sadaqah, also asking Allah to reward, to, to give it as a gift, to give the blessings and the reward of my sadaqah as a gift to the heroes of Badr, inshallah, so that you're not only going to get the blessings, you can also give sadaqah on someone else's behalf. And today we're asking you to give sadaqah on behalf of the heroes of Badr, the 313 heroes of Badr, inshallah. And it could have been more than 300. Most, most teachers will say that it was 313, but there are differences of opinion on the exact number. But inshallah, give. And I also wanted to mention anyone who gives at least $313 during this webinar, we will have a raffle just for those individuals at the end of the webinar to potentially win this uh, this wooden sandal here, this wooden sandal here. Let me show it a little bit larger. So anyone who does donate 313 or more today, you will receive, uh, you will be in the raffle to receive this $500 handmade wooden sandal, inshallah. Uh, just as a gift of appreciation, inshallah, for your donation. So uh, we are hoping that we'll give you some progress later in the program to see who, uh, how we're doing. Are we able to raise that 17000 over the course of this webinar? That would be amazing because we are very far behind on our fundraising goal so far. We have, we've only raised about 15% of our fundraising goal so far for Ramadan. So we do need a better miracle today. We need to do better with our fundraising, inshallah, so that we can hit our goal. So we're at 15% right now, but inshallah, we hope that by the end of this webinar, we'll be far exceeding 15% through your help and through the help of this generous donor, inshallah. The link to donate is launchgood.com slash cm, launchgood.com slash cm. So that, 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 that actually fulfills... The next bullet point here is that we're hoping for 313 people to share this webinar, 313 people to use the hashtag, 313 new YouTube subscribers, and we're hoping that 313 of you will make a donation to celebrate mercy today. If you don't have a lot to donate, at least donate a dollar, inshallah. Your dollar could go a long way. We could even win maybe a prize from Launch Good if we get a lot of people donating a dollar today. Uh, inshallah. So please, inshallah, help us to get as much as we can from the matching gift, the matching grant, inshallah. If we can hit 17, that would be amazing. $17,000. We'll, we'll share with you the progress later in the program, inshallah. And don't forget, if you're giving a large sadaqah donation, there are beautiful gifts that you receive, inshallah, for these giving levels. If you're giving 313, by the way, you will receive the gift for the $250 giving level. Uh, don't worry, we will get you that gift of the poster, the Salawat poster from Zaytuna College, if you give at the 313 level. And you'll be entered in that raffle for the wooden sandal as well. Here's the link again. We're sharing that link on the bottom of your screen as well. Launchgood.com slash CM. Launchgood.com slash CM. Uh, mashallah. Okay, awesome. Mashallah. <laughs> uh, Shani Baji, Shani Ala, Mashallah said that she is the first of the 313 to donate during this webinar. Mashallah. Now we just need 312 more people to donate. And don't forget, make your intention when you donate. Oh Allah, I am donating on behalf of our heroes of Badr. I'm donating on behalf of our heroes of Badr. And maybe, inshallah, inshallah, on the day of judgment, we will get to meet the heroes of Badr and they will thank you for that gift. They will thank you for doing a good deed on their behalf that will add to their blessings and it will add to your blessings. You're not going to diminish your own reward when you donate on someone else's behalf, inshallah. So let's all do that. Imagine the barakah today if we're all giving charity on behalf of our 313 heroes of Badr, inshallah. Here is the link to donate, inshallah. And I am now going to introduce our next teacher, our next teacher, and that is uh, Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud. Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud, mashallah, an amazing teacher of the Sira 
and I will introduce him and then bring him to the stage. So Sheikh Abdel Nasser Jengda gave us the background of what happened in the Meccan phase, what happened on the Hijra, and then now Sheikh Hisham will take us to the next stage of what happens next, inshallah. Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud has studied theology, hadith, legal theory, jurisprudence, ethics, Quran recitation, and Arabic with scholars in Morocco, Mauritania, and Egypt. He's taught for more than a decade at Yale, Princeton, and Harvard, and then left academia to institute Lanterna, which is an educational initiative that intends to establish learning collectives to carry forward the legacies of our greatest luminaries. He continues to read with scholars and students in the United States and abroad. And I want to also invite you all to check out lanterna.com, the website lanterna.com, where they have a free Ramadan gift that you can download, which is a dua, a dua that you recite when you complete your recitation of the Quran. Dua khatm al Quran. And it's in Arabic, English, and with transliteration, inshallah. So when you finish reciting the Quran in Ramadan, this is a beautiful resource, inshallah. And you can get that for free at lanterna.com. So now let's go ahead and bring uh, Sheikh Hisham to the stage to discuss the next phase of this story of Badr, inshallah. And Sheikh Hisham, it's great to see you, mashallah. I, I always say this every year, it's kind of cheesy, but where would we be today if Badr had gone the other way? SubhanAllah, where would we be today if Badr had gone the other way? There's nothing cheesy about that. Uh, Tariq, we owe them our lives. We, are, we say La ilaha illallah Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah because of the heroes at Badr, the fallen, the slain at Badr. And were it not for them, uh, we would not be here today. And so the Prophet honored them uh, throughout his life. And uh, he taught his ummah to do the same. And he was constant in his remembrance of them as well as those who had died at Uhud. Uh, and so uh, we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept uh, from us this small effort today and that any reward of it go to the companions of the Prophet وسلم, who sacrificed and paid with their lives so that you and I could say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu ala Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 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 Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa sayyid al-mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad, Sayyid al-awwaleen wa al-akhirin wa ala sahabatihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawm al-deen wa ahli badr al-shuhada al-tayyibin al-tahirin wa alihi wa ala alihi afdal salawat wa atam al-taslim sallallahu alayhi wa alihi We are gathered today on the occasion of the remembrance of the companions at Badr, the slain of Badr. And I would like to uh, give a short introduction to the battle and leave the details of the battle uh, to our scholars who are going to follow, inshallah, and enlighten us and remind us of their sacrifice on that battlefield. And so the story of Badr begins really, if you want to contextualize it, uh, in the period of Mecca, the period of persecution, the period uh, in which the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu were uh, banished from their own homes, where their wealth was confiscated, where they had to migrate to Abyssinia twice, uh, and uh, it culminated in the Meccan period with the Pledge of Aqaba, uh, where the Aus and the Khazraj came together uh, at, the, uh, at Aqaba, 
uh, which literally in Arabic means the the ascent, the mount of ascent, right? So this was where they ascended uh, to receive the command and the prohibition of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they left all of their worldly uh, uh, um, uh, uh, discord aside, right? All of that then was behind them, and they transcended their uh, their um, uh, decade long warfare the Aws and the Khazraj, and they saw in the Prophet وسلم, an opportunity for unity, and they pledged uh, to defend the city of Medina uh, when the Prophet وسلم, would come and to uh, hear and to obey him. And so the Prophet وسلم, uh, in the uh, second year of the Hijrah, uh, after eight um, different uh, reconnaissance missions that the Prophet ﷺ uh, sent out before Badr. The Prophet ﷺ on different, uh, in different months of the year leading up to Badr had sent out reconnaissance missions to scout what was happening along the trade routes. And uh, he was um, creating an atmosphere of agitation for the Quraysh, right? Without any fighting. And some of these were Saraya, and some of these were Ghazawat. And the difference between the two is that the Saraya are expeditions that the Prophet ﷺ sends out, but he does not attend them. He does not participate. He remains in Medina. And these are Saraya. And then there are Ghazwa. And Ghazwa, we usually think of Ghazwa as battle, and that implies bloodshed. But Ghazwa does not mean that. It means an expedition in which the Prophet ﷺ was present. Um, and so on different occasions, uh, eight different occasions, the Prophet ﷺ either sent out these expeditions and stayed behind or he um, participated as well. And there was no fighting. There was no uh, killing. There was no bloodshed. But these were uh, uh, tactics uh, to agitate, create an atmosphere of agitation with the Quraysh uh, to show that uh, these, uh, these routes are being guarded these routes are being watched, that you are under our eye. Uh, and the Prophet وسلم, in sending these, uh, these uh, expeditions out, created this atmosphere where the Quraysh uh, were intimidated along the road. Uh, where the, and there wasn't any uh, highway robbery or anything like that, but the Prophet وسلم, was making his presence known, right? Until... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in the months preceding uh, Badr, just a couple months preceding Badr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the verse, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattakun. O oh, faithful, fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those who preceded you in order that you may fear Allah, in order that you may protect yourselves from falling into Allah's displeasure and disfavor. So fasting was prescribed before uh, fighting was permitted. And this is, in, way, in, in a way, this prepares the Muslims to defeat the enemy within before battling the enemy without, right? This is this is the 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 regimen, right? The the fasting is prescribed in order for the Muslims to be able to slay the nafs before uh, they bring that nafs onto the battlefield, and this is exemplified in the fighting of Imam Ali Islam in one of the battles, uh, and we all know what a warrior he was on the battlefield uh, that he. Uh, um, smites down his enemy and his enemy at the point that he realizes that Imam Ali salam, is about to deal, deal him the decisive blow, he spits upon him and uh, Imam Ali salam, withdraws his sword, Dhul-Fiqar, right? He withdraws his sword and the man says, what, you're not going to finish it off? Imam Ali said, uh, in, at first I was going to finish you off for Allah and his messenger but then when you spat upon me it became personal Right, so he felt the nafs sort of uh, uh, creeping its its head up, right, and so instead of uh, instead of uh, smiting at the head of his enemy, he smite he smited at the he sl he slew the head of his nafs, right, when it started to peak uh, to peak its head a little bit high, and so uh, they didn't bring the nafs on the battlefield, 
right? They didn't bring the nafs on the battlefield. Um, the Prophet ﷺ, then on the third day of Ramadan, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, uh, hears about uh, the caravan of Abu Sufyan. Uh, and Abu Sufyan's caravan is guarded by 500 armed men. 500 men, and they had arms with them. They had arms with them. So, so why were they armed like that? One, because of the atmosphere of agitation, if you will, that the Prophet ﷺ had created up until that point, uh, but also because that caravan had in it 50,000 dinars worth of the Muslims' wealth, right, that they had gathered throughout all of those years, 50,000 dinar, and a dinar is a gold coin, right? So the, the value of that caravan was 50,000 dinar, which is an, in, an enormous amount of money, an enormous amount of money. If you, if you were to calculate it according to today's standards, it's an enormous amount of wealth. And the problem, I mean, because you had people like Abdurrahman ibn Auf, Uthman ibn Affan, from Mecca, right? Wealthy, the wealthy of Quraysh followed the, followed the Prophet وسلم, as well as those who had uh, very little means. And so 50,000 dinar was the, was the value of that. So they were protecting that, but they also uh, were, uh, you know, they, they were not, they did not feel safe uh, following, you know, they were always highway uh, brigands and whatnot, but the Prophet himself, وسلم, they didn't feel that they would be too safe from the companions, you know, because of all of the, because of eight encounters before where they would actually confront them and say, hey, where are you going? Where are you heading? And there would be this, this back and forth, right? This aggressive uh, sort of confrontation that they would have. Um, and, uh, and so um, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he found out that the uh, caravan of Abu Sufyan had uh, been, ha is now heading back to Mecca from Sham, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, called uh, the believers to to gather whatever they could of uh, of uh, uh, riding animals and uh, their arms to go out right to uh, confiscate their property to take back what was taken from them for Allah subhanahu wa taala had uh, had said that um, <clears throat> in Surah Al Hajj Allah subhanahu wa taala had revealed the verse. أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى نَصْرِهِمْ لَقَدِيرٌ That permission has been granted in Surah Al-Hajj, uh, verse number 39, permission has been granted to those who have been fought, to those who have been uh, um, uh, targeted, right, and persecuted by virtue of, the, of said persecution. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever able to render them victorious. Uh, so that verse, when that verse was revealed, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, uh, called his companions out that now permission has been given to finally take back and, and, and redress, the, or take back what was taken from them and redress the wrongs meted out to them. Meted out to them. And so the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, called them to go out and they went out. Whoever was in within earshot of that went out. But you had some of the some of the Sahaba uh, responded with enthusiasm, and some of them responded with, um, you know, they they thought the matter to be uh, a little too heavy, right? That uh, you know, do we, do I really want to go out to Badr today? You know, do I really want to go out and confiscate you know wealth? And it, they didn't think that it was going to be a battle. They didn't think that a battle would ensue. And even those who joined the Prophet ﷺ did not think that there was going to be a battle. They thought that they were just going to surround the, uh, the, um, the caravan and take back what was theirs, right? And so some of them stayed behind. And some of them uh, continued forth with the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍ in the next verse, those who were banished from their homes without any just cause, uh, and all that they had, uh, and all that they were calling to was that our Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so that verse was revealed, and the Prophet وسلم, called them to go out. Um, and they responded, and it took some time to come to, to come to where the where the battle was was eventually fought. Um, and uh when a 
Abu Sufyan heard that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was uh, preparing uh, the, an army against him, right? Or, or or that they were under eminent threat. Not not an army per se, but they were under eminent threat. Abu Sufyan rerouted his caravan um, and because he had already sent out scouts and sent out spies and he heard that the Prophet ﷺ was preparing an expedition against them so he rerouted to protect the caravan and he sent uh, Dham Dham, uh, one of his uh, companions, uh, to, to uh, Mecca to give them word that the Prophet ﷺ was uh, planning to confiscate their wealth um, and when they heard that they prepared an army in Mecca that was that numbered one thousand men, one thousand men, and ho with horses uh, to come out <clears throat> to 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 do war against the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The companions did not know that they were preparing. They did not know that they were preparing for war. They thought that they were going for the caravan, and Allah subhanahu wa taala um, was was with them. Allah was with them, and um, there is a verse that uh, that that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reveals a little bit later. Once they find out that there that there's actually an army being prepared, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reveals a verse that we have command, we have promised you one of the two parties, right? One of the two parties. In other words, ta'ifatain that either the party of the caravan that you would render uh, that you would uh, reign victorious over them or the army itself of Quraysh, right? That you would have victory over them. So one of them is yours, right? And so this was after they knew that there was an army being prepared. So when they um, got to, um, when they finally heard that an army was being prepared, they decided, they decided to settle at the uh, wells of Badr. And uh, up until the point that they got to Badr, there were several wells in advance, right? Several wells in advance. But um, the uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before uh, going there, and upon discovering that they were actually preparing a battle now, he took counsel from his companions. He gathered them together and he took counsel from them. Um, he asked them, what do you see uh, what do you seek to do what do you think the people are preparing an army what do you think and uh al mikdad ibn amr right um answers the oh, well you have several uh, muhajirin answer to the prophet sallallahu saying ya rasulullah we are with you we have always been with you and go wheresoever you you will we will fight with you and the prophet sallallahu asks again what do you have to say uh, oh people what do you have to say and they they respond the muhajirin respond again and the prophet sallallahu says what do you ashiru alayya ayyuhan nas uh, tell me what is your opinion O oh people and um al mikdad ibn amr says ya rasulullah imdi nima amarak allah fa nahnu mak and this is a, sah a muhajir again uh, go to wherever allah has commanded you we are with you and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asks again ya ayyuhan nas ashiru alayya ayyuhan nas uh, give me your consultation O oh people so sa'd ibn mu'ad radiyallahu anhu who, who was the leader of the tribe of aus he says to the Prophet ﷺ, Wallahi laka annaka turiduna ya Rasulullah. He says, I swear by Allah, it's as though you intend to hear from us, O Messenger of Allah, the Ansar. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Ajal. And he smiles and he says, Indeed. And so uh, Sa'ad says, Laqad amanna bik. Laqad amanna bik. Wa sadaqnaka. Wa sadaqnaka. Wa shahidna. He says, we have believed in you, O Messenger of Allah, and we affirm your truth, O Messenger of Allah, and we uh, uh, <clears throat> bear witness that everything you have brought is the truth. And we have given you promises and covenants based on that, to hear you and to obey you. And Sa'd ibn Mu'adh was referring to the Pledge of Aqaba. But the reason that the Prophet ﷺ uh, took their consult was because at the Pledge of Aqaba, the Muhajirin are with the Prophet ﷺ no matter what. But the Ansar, when they pledged at Aqaba, they pledged to protect the city of Medina. 
but the city of Medina was not under attack, right? And so that's why there were no Jews that were going out with the, the with the Prophet Sallallahu to fight the, the the enemy outside of Medina. Where were the Jews at the Battle of Badr? Well, they they didn't uh, agree with the Prophet Sallallahu to fight alongside him uh, when when the battle is offensive. They agreed only to defend the city, right? And so. The, 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 the Ansar did the same. They agreed to protect the city as long as the Prophet ﷺ was there. Uh, and, and after his migration, I mean. And so the Prophet ﷺ wanted their consultation because now they're outside the city and they did not promise to fight alongside the Muhajireen outside the city. And so this is what Saad bin Mu'ad says. He said that we have given you our agreement and our covenants to hear and obey you. Uh, so go wheresoever you please and we are with you. And this is different from what Al-Muqdad ibn Amr said. He said, go wherever Allah commands you. But Saad bin Mu'ad said, go wherever you please and you will find that, we, that, that uh, us with you. Because I swear by the one who sent you in truth. That if you were to penetrate this sea that is behind us and you would uh, go through it, that we would follow you right through it. Right? Which is different. This is all different from what uh, Musa السلام, was told by his people. Right, uh, they, they with Musa and and they said, uh, Ya Rasulullah. They said, uh, we will not tell you what the people of Moses told him. Idhab anta wa rabbuk fakatila that you go, you and your Lord, and fight. Qalu ya Musa, inna lan nadkhulaha abda ma damu fiha. That oh, Mo, oh Moses, we will not enter it so long as our enemies are there uh, in that city. Fadhab anta wa rabbuk fakatila. So go, you and your Lord, and fight. Inna ha huna qaidun. We will remain here. And this is not what the companions of Jesus, peace and blessings, uh, said, uh, said to him. That we want to eat from this banquet, this table from heaven. We want to eat from it so that our hearts find satisfaction and we know that what you have brought is actually true from your Lord. Uh, and we would we would bear witness to to that, that truth, but only after we have this buffet dinner that is that, that comes from heaven. We want we want to have heaven heavenly food, right? And so this was not the experience of the prophets who came before, right? The companions of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, they were prepared to do anything and everything for him wasallam, and they did and they paid the, battle, the, the, the price on that battlefield of Badr. And so the Messenger of Allah wasallam, was very content with the uh, with what uh, Saad ibn Mu'ad had said and what the uh, Muhajirin had said, and they continued until they passed by several wells until they got to the ba the, the the battle place of Badr. And the Prophet wasallam, um, he stopped at one of the first wells and made that his encampment. And then Al Habab ibn Mundir. He says to the Prophet وسلم, Ya Rasulullah, why have we stopped here? Have you been commanded? Is this revelation or is this uh, war and strategy? Is this the art of war? Or what, or what What exactly is going on here? And the Prophet وسلم, said, no, this is the art of war. Right? This is this is uh, this is stratagem, and the Prophet Sallallahu and, and so Al Habab ibn Mundar or Habab ibn Mundar said to the Prophet Sallallahu Then I think if it's strategy, I think it would be better that we destroy each and every one of these wells, and that we build a reservoir uh, uh, toward the toward the battle site of Badr. That we build a reservoir there, and so uh, and we fill it with water. Right, as much as we can, and that way we will guard the water supply, and uh, and when we meet the enemy, they will be fighting for water while we will be fighting for Allah and His Messenger, right? And so this is what they were doing, and they would they did this while fasting. This is in Ramadan. This is on the seventeenth of Ramadan is when the battle ensued. The seventeenth of Ramadan. So they were they were. <sighs> And, and, and it shows how when you are in battle, you cut off food and water supply 
and they were themselves in battle against their nafs. So they were cutting off the food and the water supply until their inner enemy surrendered. That raggedy old nafs, right, has to surrender, surrender through hunger and thirst. But on the battlefield, they were also uh, cutting off the water supply. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he uh, agrees to that. And the night before the battle, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sends down torrential rain, flow, r rain pour upon the companions, upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. And uh, the reservoir that they built fills with water. It fills with water. And then Prophet Sallallahu then they all see the the, the, the enemies coming on, on the battlefield. And then Prophet Sallallahu asked them how many uh, camels do they do they slaughter uh, per day? And they they say, Ya Rasulullah, they slaughter between nine and ten. And he said, then they then they number between nine hundred and a thousand men. And uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sa'd ibn Mu'ad, has a tent built for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in heartfelt du'a to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that, Oh Allah, if the people are uh, destroyed then you will not be worshipped on the earth. And this was his ardent dua until Abu Bakr anhu says to the Prophet وسلم, Ya Rasulullah, you have been promised one of the two parties. You've been promised. And so have no fear. Have no fear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised you victory. Wa salli allahumma wa sallim wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim taslima kathira kathira. Sallallahu ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Jazakum Allah khair to Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud. MashaAllah, we're getting a lot of comments from the audience just in response to the uh, beautiful, beautiful talk and Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud just talked about giving us some added context of why the Battle of Badr took place. What were the incidents that happened right before the battle about the, the caravan of Abu Sufyan, about the permission to intercept the caravan of Abu Sufyan, about the fact that Abu Sufyan warned the Meccans that there's an army of Muslims coming for me. You all need to send an army to defend this caravan. And what happened when the Muslims found out as 300 men that an army of a thousand was coming their way, subhanAllah, uh, and the commitment of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the Sahaba. Look at this, what Mrs. Wallace Ali said, uh, profound Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed fasting before fighting so that the believers could fight the battle of their nafs before the outward battle with the disbelievers MashaAllah, that's a beautiful comment with the hashtag as well, inshaAllah. Uh, Jazakum Allah khair. Thank you to that sister. And I think we have some other comments here as well. The oppressed ones are protected by Allah. That's the lesson. That's the lesson. And uh, MashaAllah, uh, Alhamdulillah, the Sahabas, may Allah be pl pl pleased with them, had Allah. You can't get more prepared than having the Lord of the worlds with you. SubhanAllah. That was a divinely inspired strategy. Wow, Badr was fought fasting. Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. Uh, amazing, amazing. And we are uh, very soon going to be bringing Sheikh Yasser Fahmi to the stage. Uh, so Sheikh uh, Hisham brought us to, he talked about the march towards Badr and the response of the Muhajirun, the Muhajirin and the Ansar when the Prophet Sallallahu asked them, are you willing to lay down your lives? Are you willing to lay down your lives for this cause? Are you willing to fight here? We came to, we came to take a caravan, to take back our property. And now we're being met with an army that is three times our size. Are you all prepared to commit to a battle? SubhanAllah. Uh, what an amazing, amazing scene. This is why these are the heroes that we have to thank 
today. These are the heroes that we thank today for being Muslim. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So we, uh, we also just want to, oh, and this is just, these are the numbers that were shared earlier. Of look, at, look at how the Muslims were outnumbered three to one, three to, no, to one. The Muslims, uh, the Meccan army, this, there's actually a mistake here. This should say, let me correct this mistake real quick. There we go. It's missing a zero. Now I'll, I'll, I'll reshare. The Meccan army had over a thousand soldiers. There we go. Yes, the Meccan army had over a thousand soldiers. Uh, and the Muslim army had uh, th uh, 313 to 317. Uh, subhanallah. Subhanallah. Amazing. Subhanallah. Um, and these are the numbers that they were that they were faced with. So this is the beautiful context that Sheikh Hisham gave us. And I have some good news to share with you all that you all have been donating, mashallah, throughout this program. You all have been donating generously. Uh, we do have that matching grant that a donor promised us today. Uh, Alhamdulillah. And so far, I'll, t I'll tell you, we have this really cool graphic here we can show you, is that so far, uh, there has been $7,000 donated during this webinar to help us unlock the 17K Badr match. Why 17,000? Because it's the 17th of Ramadan, the 17th of Ramadan. Even if you just give a dollar today, you know, we're trying to have 313 donors today, at least give a dollar, at least give a dollar, inshallah, at least donate that $1, uh, inshallah, to help us get closer to the goal. And your intention when you donate, inshallah, should be that you are donating on behalf of our heroes at Badr, that you're donating, inshallah, on behalf of our heroes at Badr, inshallah. So this is the link where you can donate. And now we're going to go to Sheikh Yasser Fahmi, inshallah, who will take us to the night before the battle. What was that night? The 17th night of Ramadan before the 17th day of Ramadan, before the morning of the battle, inshallah. So he'll discuss with us the night before the battle, the morning of the battle, and right before both armies meet in full combat with each other, inshallah. So let me introduce Sheikh Yasser Fahmi and he will begin his uh, talk, inshallah. Sheikh Yasser Fahmi graduated from Rutgers Business School. And after working for a number of years in finance, he then moved to Egypt where he studied for eight years at Al-Azhar University. In his time at Al-Azhar University, he attained numerous ijazas, that's independent certifications, and studied under many notable teachers, including Sheikh Ahmed Taha Rayyan. May Allah have mercy on him. In 2013, Sheikh Yasser Fahmi became the first American Azhari to teach in the renowned Al-Azhar Mosque. And currently, Sheikh Yasser is the founder of Prophetic Living. And you can check out Prophetic Living on Instagram and Facebook to stay connected with his classes and programs there, inshallah. Let's go ahead and bring Sheikh Yasser to the stage now. And it's great to see that, mashallah, we have still over 400 devices connected. That would be over 800 viewers viewing right now, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Yasser. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. <clears throat> Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala wa la hawla wa la quwwati illa billah Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina muhammadin fil awalim wa fil akhirin wa fil mala il ala ila yawm al din alhamdulillah It's a blessing to be together on this day of Badr in this beautiful day in Islamic history that we commemorate and we revere and we honor um, profoundly those forerunners of our ummah who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said لَعَلَّ اللَّهُ اطَّلَعَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ بَدْرِ That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gazed upon, the divine gaze is upon the people of Badr, أَهْلِ بَدْرِ وَقَالَ اِعْمَلُوا مَا شِئْتُمْ قَدْ غَفَرْتُ لَكُمْ Do what you will, I have forgiven your sins. The people of Badr, the, 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 the warriors of Badr, they represented the epitome of what sacrifice looks like and what it means and what it represents. And so Alhamdulillah, it's an honor to, to be able to reference and to be in the company of that, um, that community and those individuals and to be able to, to celebrate this moment, praising, hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow some of those graces upon us and allow us to be representative of Muslimin on this earth the way that they were. 
So brothers and sisters, the night of the battle was uh, a very powerful moment uh, in the in the kind of the um, the cadence of 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 the events, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now he gathered the Muslimin and he placed them into rows into sufuf, and he started to give each katiba each grouping its orders and its commands, and something that many of us don't know is that he actually gave them code words. He gave each group a code word. So he told um, the uh, the code word or the secret word between the group of the Muhajireen was Ya Bani Abdul Rahman. And between the group of the Khazraj, it was Ya Bani Abdullah. And the group of the Aus, it was Ya Bani Ubaidillah. And for the, uh, the Fursan, those who are upon horseback, their code word was Khaylullah, you know, the horses of Allah. And the entire army the entire army's code word was Ahadun Ahad, subhanAllah. <laughs> and Ahadun Ahad is the famous proclamation and exclamation of Sayyiduna Bilal. And this, these, these words were used as a mechanism for the Prophet ﷺ to manage the affairs of the Muslimin. And so as um, the night came and a, a, a reality transpired, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about in Surah Al-Anfal, verse number 11, إِذْ يُغَشِّيكُمُ النُّعَاسَ أَمَنَةً مِّنْهُ وَيُنَزِّلُ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً لِيُطَهِرَكُمْ بِهِ وَيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ رِجْزَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَلِيَرْبِطْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَيُثَبِّتْ بِهِ الْأَقْدَامِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers the believers with this beautiful covering of sleep. So they go to sleep أَمَنَةً in safety and security and wellness. And he brings down this beautiful, enriching rain from the skies to purify them. So here, Allah is allowing for a particular divine reality to transpire, where now he is going to cover and protect his companions, the companions of Al-Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his servants. So he brings sleep over them. So they go into sleep, they go into this battle, Completely relaxed, <laughs> subhanAllah. You know, they weren't anxious the night before. They were asleep. And they had these beautiful rains that came down upon them so that Allah purifies them inwardly and outwardly. And to remove from you the whispers of Satan. And to tie down your hearts to make you confident and firm and resolute. وَيُثَبِّتْ بِهِ الْأَقْدَامِ And to make them steadfast on their feet. So this is the divine grace that descended upon them in that night. Now as all the companions are sleeping, our messenger Al-Habib is wide awake. And it is said that the Prophet remained awake the entirety of the night. And he was in a state of tadarrah. He was in a state of humble a munaja, pleading and begging of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and crying the entire night. He's weeping, crying, calling upon Allah. Allahumma anjiz li ma wa'attani. Oh Allah, fulfill for me that which you have promised and give me that which you have, um, you know, assured me that I will have. Allahumma in tuhlik hadihi al-isaba. You know, imagine all of them are sleeping. And he's saying, Ya Allah, if you were to make it, that this isaba, this group, were to uh, to be defeated in Ahl al-Islam from those people of al-Islam, la tu'bad fil ard, you will not be worshipped on this earth. So he was making these very powerful proclamations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, decrying, Ya Allah, you know, assure us victory in this moment. You know, gift us what you have promised us. Because if this defeat does not happen, Right at the hands of the Muslimin towards the Mushrikeen, then you will not be worshipped on this earth thereafter. And he began, and he continued, he continued in that state all night. And the indication is of that some of the companions perhaps were awake witnessing this, but for the most part, we know that they were all sleeping. And so the next morning, as the Prophet uh, came time to Fajr, he awakened all of the companions. And he said, you know, halummu ila salah, come to prayer. And they stood. And subhanAllah, something that um, is important to note is that the change of the qibla, 
from Al-Aqsa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and protect Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and remove the tyranny that's upon it. The, t- the change of the Qibla happened three weeks, two to three weeks before Ghazwat Badr. And that's an indication, it's a foreshadowing of where you're going to go. You know, it's, this is all leading up to Fathul Mecca, Fathul Mecca. So it's as if the Muslims now in Badr, they now had their Qibla. We know exactly where we are going. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he brings, he gathers, and then he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's told, they, they, the, Prophet, they are, the Prophet ﷺ is told is that they are able to see Quraysh. So the Prophet ﷺ calls to Allah, he said, Ya Rabb, this is Quraysh. It has come forth with its arrogant uh, disposition. And it has come forth with his boastfulness. And it has come, Ya Rabbi, to challenge you and to belie your messenger. Allahumma fa nasraka alladhi wa'attani. Oh Allah, your victory that you have promised. So the Prophet ﷺ stood and then he told the companions, Qumu ila jannatin arduha samawat wal ard. Come, stand up. Right now, he has already arranged them in the rows. Stand up and come to heaven. That is, that spans that spans the heavens and the earth. And as he was um, he was organizing the rows, he had a small stick in his hand. And so one of the companions who was a little bit outside of uh, you know the row, his name was Sawad ibn Ghaziya. He poked him in the belly. He poked, he poked Sawad in the belly. And so the Prophet ﷺ, uh, told him, Istawi ya Sawad, you know, be, uh, be, be steadfast and firm ya Sawad. And so Sawad said, Ya Rasulullah, you have hurt me. You have hurt me by your, your poking of me. وَقَدْ بَعَثَكَ اللَّهُ بِالْحَقِّ وَالْعَدْلِ And God sent you with the truth and with justice. And so I ask that now I need retribution. Qisas. <laughs> so the Prophet ﷺ, now imagine, imagine they're standing. This is a, a profound moment of battle. This is, I mean, the, the, the energy is at the highest point. Everyone is 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 moving firm. This is a, a seminal uh, moment in the in the history of Islam. The first time the Muslimin are going up against the Mushrikeen, and they were well resourced. The other side was full of resources and wealth, etc. And for Sawat to say, "I want my rights because you poked me in the stomach," so the Prophet ﷺ said, "Iqtasa minni, take your rights from me." So the Prophet ﷺ lifted his shirt, his 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 rida, he lifted it. And Sawad hugged and put his cheek to the belly of the Prophet ﷺ. And so the Prophet ﷺ asked him, Ya Sawad, what compelled you to do this? You know, what inspired this action? He said, Ya Rasulullah, because of what we're going to embark upon. And I know that death is imminent. I want the last thing that my skin has touched is your skin. I want your barakah, Ya Rasulullah. And subhanAllah, this spirit of seeking the barakah of al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a spirit that permeates from the, from the time of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een all the way until today, always seeking the blessing of al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to, to you know, Ahmad ibn Hanbal and many, many, many of our pious predecessors. His wasiya was that when he were to die, he wanted a hair from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be uh, underneath his tongue as he was being buried. So that he has the barakah of al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what does this tell us about our relationship to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and seeking the barakah of al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our lives? So uh, uh, as this is happening, af- after this happens, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam begins to give them more specific uh, directives. You know that uh, all of you remain on your knees until I tell you to stand up. None of you take out your swords until I command you to do so. Etc. He gave them very specific, you know, uh, tactics, war tactics, and then he said to them, "Wa an and remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala abundantly. And in that, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed in Surah Al-Anfal, verse number forty-five, "Ya If you meet your enemy, fathbutu, be firm. And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly. And so the dhikr of Allah the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was replete in their hearts and their souls. It was a spiritual reality, a theological fortification, but it was also a tactic. It was one of the measures that were taken as preparedness measures as they're going to enter into battle. And so the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, once again, from the night before until now, as he's preparing them and he's now standing, he goes into his 
uh, his 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 small makeshift uh, room that was prepared for him, and he's raising his hands and he's decrying, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, and the only one who's with him is Sayyiduna Abu Bakr. Sayyiduna Ali was going back and forth to um, check on the Prophet ﷺ and check on the the the, the, the warriors to check on the, and back and forth. So Sayyiduna Umar, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr was with the Prophet, and Sayyiduna Ali saw this, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, and then he stands up, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma, and then he says once again what he said the night before: "In in tahlik hadhihi al-isaba, if 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 this uh, you know group is defeated, then you will not be worshipped on this earth once again." وَيَدْعُ وَيُلِحْ عَلَى رَبِّهِ and he's he's begging Allah subhanahu wa taala. You know, you see his concern in this moment. And Allahumma anjiz li ma wa'attani, and he has his hands raised, and uh, you know, fulfill for me that which you have promised. Allahumma nasrak, ya Rabbi, your victory. And he raises his hands until the ibaa that was on his shoulders, the cloak that was on his shoulders, falls off. And Sayyiduna Abu Bakr sees this. Wa ashfaq alayhi Abu Bakr, and Abu Bakr was felt very tender towards the Prophet ﷺ because he saw his beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, crying and and begging and pleading with Allah subhanahu wa taala. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, how when alayka nafsak, you know, Ya Rasulullah, please take it easy on yourself. You know, فَإِنَّهُ سَيُنْجِزْ لَكَ وَعْدَكَ He will fulfill, he will grant you your, what he has promised you. So don't tire yourself. لا تُتْحِبْ نَفْسَكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Don't tire yourself. Allahu Akbar. You know, brothers and sisters, this, this moment when the Prophet ﷺ was in, in utter, you know, if you will, almost like agonizing over his pleading with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an, an, a stark distinction from what happened just, you know, two years ago in the Hijrah. Because the Prophet ﷺ, they were in the hijrah and Sayyidina Abu Bakr was afraid. The Prophet ﷺ was at complete peace and ease. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr is worried. He said, Ya Rasulullah, they'll see us. And he said, Allahu thalithuhuma. What do you think of two and Allah is their third? He was completely cool, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when the ulama, they say, why was well, the Prophet ﷺ in the cave of Thawr? Why was he so relaxed? But here he's 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 sitting there pleading and begging and the rida is falling and, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr is saying, Ya Rasulullah, please take it easy. They say because when it was just him and Sayyidina Abu Bakr and the only thing that was a threat was him, he was at peace. But now because it was the cause of Al-Islam, the reason for his existence, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to, to, to bring people into the beauty of this tradition and to have Islam protected and preserved for until ila yawm al-deen. He is the Nabi and the Rasul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the, when the muhimma, when the responsibility was so great and he sallallahu alayhi wasallam and it was about his ummah then he he could not be at, at rest. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in this context from Surah Al-Fal verse number 9 إِذْ تَسْتَغِيثُونَ رَبَّكُمْ if you if you beg your Lord, huh? you 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 seek to be saved, lakum, and your Lord responds to you, Anni mumiddukum bi alfin min al malaikati murdifin that I am going to aid you and support you with a thousand angels who will come down in rows who will be the junood that they cannot see and you cannot see, but they will be with you. Subhanallah. And so, you know, uh, we have to ask ourselves. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr knew that the, the wa'ad was there. He knew that the promise was there. And the Prophet ﷺ himself knew that the promise was there. So why is it? Why is it that if the Prophet knew that the promise of Allah is that victory will be theirs, why was the Prophet ﷺ in this state? Why was he crying? Why was he begging and pleading? Why did he spend the whole night yastaghith? Seeking to be saved, seeking for the ummah to be saved. Why is that the case? Because the Prophet ﷺ is exuding and representing the epitome of what it means to be a servant of Allah. He never taught, he never took the status that he had with Allah for granted. He never did. No matter what he knew, he was promised to worship Allah, to surrender, to beg, to plead, to thank, to yearn that disposition of a humble servant who calls upon Allah, raising his hands to the sky, that is the epitome of rububiyyah, of servanthood. And so the Prophet ﷺ is modeling, he's representing it because he is a, he is the essence of servanthood, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he's also teaching us. 
is that no matter what you think you have or what you don't have, you always have to be in a state of pleading with Allah, begging of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tastaghif, Allahumma ya mughithu aghithna. That is, uh, oh ya Allah, you are the one who saves, save us. Because that is what it means to be a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now the time has come and Sayyidina Abu Bakr comes to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, iqtarab al qawmu minna. They have, they're coming close, they're coming right here. So now that the Prophet sallallahu is done, you know, his, 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 his tadarra and his istighatha from the night until that moment, that now, now it's the battle has officially come. The Prophet in utter peace, he says, Abshir ya Abu Bakr. <laughs> I'm glad, you know, glad tidings of Abu Bakr. Be happy. Ataka Nasrullah. The victory of Allah has come. This is, this now the battle is about to start. The victory has come. You know, Hadha Jibreel, Mu'tajir bi imamatin safra. This is Jibreel. He has come with a, 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 a yellow turban. He's now taking the horse of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. And so the Prophet sallam, comes out of uh, his house and he says, سَيُهْزَمُ الْجَمْعَ وَيُوَلُّونَ الدُّبُرِ That now this group will be defeated and they will run back, they will flee. They will flee, uh, they will retreat. The time, their promise has come now. And what a profound and, uh, and, and, and magnificent moment this is. And so, uh, Sayyiduna, this, this verse, by the way, from Surah Al-Qamar, verse number 45 and 46, this was revealed in the Meccan period. And Sayyiduna Umar says, like we, this was when they were at the epitome of, the, of, if you will, you know, of persecution in Mecca. And so he was saying to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, which group is going to be defeated? You know, and, and, and this is the group. It was this moment. So the Prophet Sallam is, is, as he's now coming out, he's saying these verses. And he is, uh, he is encouraging them. Uh, and pushing them forward. So he swears by he says, and by the one who's uh, uh, the, by the one who possesses the soul of Muhammad, that no one who comes forth from and he's talking to the to all the men now. Anyone who goes forth and fights patiently, hoping. In the reward of Allah, moving forward and never retreating, that except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant them Jannah. He will bring them into Jannah. So Qumu. And so he once again tells them, stand and go towards heaven that spans the heavens and the earth. And so one of the Sahaba, Umayr ibn Himam al-Ansari, he hears this and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Jannatun arduha samawat wal ard, laysa bayni wa baynaha illa an yaqtuluni ha'ula. Like you're talking to, you're calling to me to a heaven that spans the heavens and the earth, and and between myself and them and heaven is only that I fight these individuals. So he said, Prophet Sallam said, Naam, yes. So Umayr said, Bakhin Bakh, you know, which is a, 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 an indication of happiness and joy. Bakhin Bakh, and so the Prophet Sallam said, Lima taqul Bakhin Bakh? Why do you say this? So Umayr said. I do not say this, Ya Rasulullah, except that I hope to be amongst those that you just said who will be granted Jannah. And he said, فَإِنَّكَ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا And you are from them. Allahu Akbar. I, you know, brothers and sisters, just the, the, the spirit of the moment and the, 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 the amazing kind of springing forth and flowing forth of iman, of faith, of belief, and conviction, of seeking the akhirah. You know, Allah tells us, those who desire the afterlife and they walk the walk of the afterlife. You know, and so subhanAllah, these, rep these 313 companions of the Messenger وسلم, with the Messenger وسلم, they represent that haqiqah. You know, and that's why we're commemorating it because we need that in our day and age. And so lastly, inshallah, I know I've gone well beyond my time, but just just to cover before what uh, Sheikh Shadi, inshallah, will, will continue from in terms of the actual battle. Uh, the Mubarazah happened.
So Utba wa Shayba wa Akhu wa Ibnuhu al Walid ibn Utba from the Mushrikeen side, they come out and they said, Man Yubaris, who's going to um, face us in this pre battle kind of demonstration? So they wanted to, you know, have three members from the Prophet side come out to fight the three of them, right? Uh, as a precursor to the battle. And so three of the Ansar came out to say, We will be the ones who fight. Um, and he said, so 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 Utba said, Akifa un kira. These are uh, these are good adversaries, right? That walakinna nuridu qawmana. But we want people from our we want from our people, i.e. the muhajireen. You the Ansar, we respect. We don't deny that you three coming forward, stepping up, is honorable. However, we want three from our people. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Qumya Hamza, wa qumya Ali, wa qumya Ubaida ibn al-Harith who is the cousin of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Hamza stands up, Sayyiduna Hamza stands up, and Sayyiduna Ali stands up, and Ubaida ibn Harith stands up, who is the cousin of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when they stood forward, the Mushrikeen said, Man antum, because they were wearing their shields and so they could not be seen. Takallamu na'rifakum, speak so that we can know you. So Hamza, <laughs> Allahu Akbar, Sayyiduna Hamza says, Ana asadullah. Asadu Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I am the, the lion of Allah, the lion of the messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they said, Kuf'un kareem. This is an honorable um, you know, adversary. وَقَالَ Ali wa ana Abdullah أَخُو رَسُولِ اللَّهِ And I am... I am the servant of Allah, the brother of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they said, Kuf'un kareem. They said, this is an honorable adversary. And then Ubaidah said, Wa ana asadul hulwafa. And I am the, 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 the lion of those who have come together in agreement. And so each of them, they went and they stood. And Sayyiduna Hamza, you know, he, he, he killed his adversary from the other side, from the mushrikeen, and Sayyiduna Ali. And then Sayyiduna uh, Ubaidah, he struggled a little bit. He ultimately was victorious, but he was injured. But it was not an injury that led to his death. But they all stood firm as men of Allah, as servants of Allah, as those who were committed to the way of Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They did not hesitate. They did not flinch. And brothers and sisters, you know, we have to... We have to take these moments. You know, we, we're not just listening to a story. We need these story. We need this this moment from our sacred history to be a point of inspiration for us to become men and women of Allah, to be lions of Allah, to be servants of Allah, to be servants and and uh, 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 you know uh, uh, and those who obey the way of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who come forth with conviction and strength and honor and dignity, and who are willing to sacrifice everything. That's what they were willing to do. That's what they did. And that's why Allah said, Allah The Prophet said, Allah ala ahli Badr. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them the highest and most sacred of ranks. And may He allow us to follow in their footsteps. Barakallahu feekum wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you to uh, Sheikh Yasser Fahmi for that beautiful story of the night before Badr and the um, the morning of Badr and the beginning of the one-on-one -on -one combat that took place between three of the Muslims uh, and three of the enemies uh, in that battle right before the battle uh, ensues. Uh, SubhanAllah. What an amazing, amazing story. Um and uh, we're seeing some beautiful comments coming in. Mashallah. Uh, you know, I'm going to share some here. Uh, what a uh, what a narration of a beautiful story. What a great narration of a beautiful story. Mashallah. Never take it for granted. We don't know what is written really. Dua changes qadr. Mashallah. Uh, Maryam, who said, the love and concern our Prophet had for the Ummah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Such a wonderful teacher. He's bringing this event to life. Mashallah. Uh, ya Rab, alhamdulillah, loving this so much, loving this so much. You gave us Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, Masha Allah. Uh, and uh, 
here. So many of us are shy to make du'a with this kind of force. He was not playing, uh, subhanAllah. We can just imagine the love of the Sahaba for our blessed messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, many tears, subhanAllah. This this story all can you know always brings us to tears, subhanAllah. So, uh, mashallah, we are going to go next to Dr. Shadi to tell us the story of the actual battle itself. I did want to mention, mashallah, that we do have a webinar sponsor today uh, from the Bengali family. Mashallah, we pray for them. Let's all make du'a for them. They helped cover you know, um, the costs of this webinar today in memory of Zulekha Nani Bengali and Haji Hashim Bengali. May Allah forgive their sins and grant them the company of his beloved prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and all of their descendants, the company of his beloved prophet. Everyone say ameen to this beautiful dua, inshallah. Uh, and thank you to all the supporters of Celebrate Mercy who have helped us, you know, look in, in 2022, 266 webinars, 266 webinars that, alhamdulillah, you all enabled through your donations in 365 days, alhamdulillah. So jazakumallah khair to all of you uh, for all of your help. Um, jazakumallah khair. And, you know, there is a great update. We talked about the matching grant. Uh, uh, we have a generous donor matching up to $17,000 today for every dollar donated up to 17 k He will match it, inshallah in honor of our heroes of Badr, and we are now at 9,000 out of the 17,000, so more than halfway there. And if you go to our Launch Good page, we now have a giving level, 313. You can give $313 on behalf of the heroes of Badr, on, inshallah, sadaqah on their behalf, inshallah. Uh, and anyone who does 313 or more today during this webinar we will have a raffle where they could win a big prize, the, the wooden sandal, inshallah. So this is where you can go to donate, inshallah. Uh, Jazakum Allah khair. And um, a lot of you have been using the hashtag as well, the CM Badr hashtag. I'm just going to quickly show you all some of your all's posts, mashallah. Uh, you, you probably recognize your Instagram stories, your pictures, mashallah. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, all of you will also be entered into a raffle to potentially win a prize. So Keep using that hashtag as you uh, are watching the program or you can email us your photo because we're going to have those two raffles at the end of the webinar, inshallah. Let me introduce Dr. Shadi, inshallah. And following Dr. Shadi, we will have um, uh, Sheikh Maryam Amir and then um, we have Sheikh Yahya Rodas joining us as well, inshallah. And don't forget at the end of the program, the final part of the program will be a recitation of all the names of the heroes of Badr with a dua for them as well. And that will be a really blessed recitation, inshallah. Uh, Dr. Shadi al-Masri was born and raised in New Jersey. He began studying at the age of 18, traveling to a number of countries, including Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and Morocco. In addition to traditional learning, he received a master's from the George Washington University and a PhD from the University of London, SOAS, and he went on to teach at several universities, including Yale, SOAS, Trinity College, Hartford Seminary, and Manhattanville College, and currently serves as scholar in residence at the New Brunswick Islamic Center, NBIC, uh, in New Jersey. Is anyone here from the NBIC community? Mashallah, it's a beautiful community. He's also the founder and head of Safina Society, an institution dedicated to the cause of traditional Islamic education in the West. So without any further delay, inshallah, Dr. Shadi, uh, you can go ahead and share. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and share the video about the actual battle itself when the combat began. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa wala. Finally, the moment of truth had, has come and the battle has commenced and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did what he always did which is he took from the examples of the prophets before him, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And many, many times the prophet looked for some symbolism of what the prophets previously did to commend his action. Uh, out of tabarruk, seeking the barakah of the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also elevating the status of those prophets that their action has now become a sunnah for the last messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is not a barakah for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but a barakah for them 
so that they will be rem remembered in the final ummah and the last ummah. Therefore, the Prophet, peace be upon him, does not just establish his own personal sunnah, he shares the reward. And in this case, who is it that is a prophet amongst, before us, that had any exim situation similar to the Battle of Badr, in which a small band of believers were fighting a large army of believers, uh, of disbelievers. And that is none other than the Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. The greatest of people in one hadith, are the greatest of armies is the army of Dawood that fought Jalut. And ja Dawood at the time was just a mere soldier amongst them. And their king was Talut. King of the Bani Israel was Talut. And the people of Badr. And some say they are the same number, namely 313. Other narrations say 315 and there's no precise number. And others yet say that the likeness of soldiers of to believers is the likeness of the messengers to the prophets. There are th the same number of prophets in some narrations as those who attended the battle with Jalut against Jalut and the battle of Badr. And so what did the Prophet ﷺ do? Sayyidina Dawood fought that battle with a stone. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, picked up some pebbles and to give confidence to his to, uh, to the to the to the sahaba took a couple steps and launched these pebbles into the faces of the Quraysh and he said shahatil wujuh may your faces be smeared and Allah ta'ala answered his prayer and to show the difference between the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Sayyidina Dawood that Sayyidina Dawood's rock killed one person but the pebbles of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam entered the eyes of every single member of the Qurayshi army. 1,000 people. Now, if you're in a boxing match and your eyesight, you lose vision for five seconds, you're finished. They lost their vision and they were stuck trying to get pebbles out of their eyes. They couldn't see for a mere few seconds. And as the books of Seer said, that's all it took. فَكَانَتِ hazima. It was a rout. Immediately your enemy can't see for a few seconds. That's it. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said and had announced to these people, to the, to the Sahaba, if you see an Abbas, if you see any of the sons of Hashim, they come out by force. They do not come out because they want to. Okay. One Sahabi said, our sons and our fathers are to go and be killed meaning Quraysh we have fathers there we have sons there we're going to go and kill our own fathers and own sons but we're going to save your family you're going to save Abbas he said by Allah if I see Abbas I'm going to strike his face Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Omar the uncle of, Ab uh, of your prophet is going to be struck and you stay silent the Pro Omar ibn Khattab said wallahi I'm going to cut his neck off this man is a munafiq. That man made tawbah at, on the spot. And he said, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness on the spot. And he said later on in his life, he said, I feared Umar. I still feared Umar or some punishment would come upon me for saying what I said and hurting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa I said, oh Allah, nothing will forgive this sin of mine except martyrdom. And he did get martyred in the battle of al yamama Now the Prophet ﷺ gave another set of good news to the Sahaba. They're not fighting alone. They're fighting with legions of Mala'ika. And these Mala'ika are the first and last angels to ever strike. Rather, the Prophet ﷺ said there were many angels and there will be many angels to join many armies in the future. But adadan wa madadan, which means they will only give the appearance of numbers and they will give the feeling of strength but they will never strike the Sayyidina Jibreel said the greatest of angels in the in the heavens are those who fought at the battle of Badr and Sayyidina Jibreel himself came to fight at the battle of Badr and they struck no other group of angels ever entered a battle and actually had an impact and struck and a Sahabi would be chasing a mushrik and he would find his head come off before he even reached him. And there was two Bedouin sitting at the uh, uh, on a mountain watching. This was 
theater for them in the old days. You find that there's a battle, you go and you watch it. One of them got so startled when he heard the hoofs, a loud hoofs of a horse trapped, uh, f racing by them, that he looked and he found his brother was equally startled and, had, and died from the shock. And that's how loud these mala'ika were. And that's how quick the route was to the point that this battle did not take very long. It was a shock to, to Quraysh. And it was the dream come true of Atika. Atika, days before, the aunt of the Prophet وسلم, the daughter of Abdul Muttalib, she had had a dream. In that dream, she said a man came and he warned, he shouted a warning. He said, Quraysh, you have three days. And then he went to the other side of the city and said, Quraysh, you have three days. And he went to the other side of the city and said, Quraysh, you have three days. And then a large boulder came, crashed upon Mecca and entered into every house, causing damage. She told Abbas, oh Abbas, I seen this dream that a man came and, and warned us that we have three days. And he said this three times and then a boulder came, crashed onto the city and entered into the, damaged every house. Abbas said, Wallahi, it's a true dream, but don't tell anybody. On the way back home, and Abbas couldn't resist. And he told his friend, he said, but don't tell anybody. And that friend was so moved by the dream, he went and he told his father. I said, but don't tell anybody. And the father told his wife and said, but don't tell anyone. And the wife told her friend and said, don't tell anyone. By the middle of the day, Abu Jahl was talking about it. He said, Abbas, is it in enough? That Bani Hashim has a male prophet, now you have a female prophet? Who is this Nabiya of yours? He said, Abu Abbas, he said, we're going to wait three days. And if nothing happens after three days, Wallahi, we will spread the word that the Bani Hashim are the biggest of liars with two, two fake prophets. So Abbas became upset. He said, I never was intimidated by Abu Jahl, but I was upset with what he said. And he started thinking maybe the dream was wrong. And he started to doubt himself and he started to worry. And the first day passed and the second day passed. On the third day, and Abbas came out and lo and behold, a man by the name of Damdama came and he said, oh people, I warn you, the caravan of Abu Sufyan is under attack. Gather an army for Muhammad has gathered his army. And then Abbas knew at this moment, that was the dream and that this army would fail and that the army of the Prophet وسلم, would prevail. And this is exactly what happened. And Abbas was caught as a prisoner. Abu Jahl was sought. And the Prophet وسلم, named, tracked down Abu Jahl, tracked down Abu Lahab, tracked down Umayyah bin Khalaf. And the first to be found of these was Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl was found by two youth, two orphans of the Ansar, they came upon Abu Jahl, put their swords in him and knocked him down. Then who came and found Abu Jahl? Abdullah bin Mas'ud. The small and tiny and skinny Abdullah bin Mas'ud came and he sat on the chest of Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl said to him, what, was the res what happened? What's the results? How has this war ended, this battle? He said, Wallahi, Muhammad has defeated you. He said, tell Muhammad I'm his enemy in, his li in life and I'm his enemy in death. The Prophet later commented about this and he said, my enemy was worse than Fir'aun. Fir'aun at the end at least said, I believe in the God of Bani Israel. And he submitted at the end of his life or attempted to submit and Jibreel stuffed his mouth. Abu Jahl then got his head cut off by Abdullah bin Mas'ud. But it was too big for Abdullah bin Mas'ud to carry back to the Prophet And why was this wonderful? Justice. وَيَشْفِ سُدُورَ قَوْمِ mu'minin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This battle will heal the hearts of many injured believers whose hearts have been injured by the abuse of Quraysh. Because in the time of the Prophet in the time of, of Mecca, when they lived in Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ taught the Sahaba the Qur'an. One day, Abdullah bin Mas'ud was so moved that he in, in announced that he's going to recite the Qur'an at the Haram. The Prophet ﷺ said, Abdullah, don't do it. They're going to hurt you. He said, well, I have to do it. He went and he recited the Qur'an out loud 
in the Haram. Abu Jahl, he was the first person to do a public recitation of the Quran right around the Kaaba. Abu Jahl was so angry with him, he smacked him so hard that his ear was bleeding. Abdullah bin Mas'ud went to the Prophet وسلم, and he said, look what Abu Jahl did. He hit me so hard, my ear is bleeding. And the Prophet made dua for him. And he said, I told you, you didn't have to go. This day, Abdullah bin Mas'ud is the one who slices the neck of Abu Jahl. And he ties a rope to the ear of Abu Jahl and he drags the head back to the Prophet What does the Prophet do? He smiles and he said, Allah is just. O oh, Ibn Abbas, do you remember when Abu Jahl broke your ear? He said, now you tied a string around his ear and brought his head here. An ear for an ear and the head is extra. And there was someone else who was severely tortured. Who else but Bilal? And who tortured him? Umayyah bin Khalaf. Umayyah bin Khalaf was a rich man who was weighty and heavy. And he was not planning to come to this battle. And what happened was that one of the youth, Uqba ibn Mu'id, came to Abu Jahl and perfumed him and said, since you're staying and you're not coming to the battle, I figured to perfume you along with the women. So Umayyah became angry and he came to the battle. In this battle, he was caught, cut down and he was injured. And who caught him? His old business partner and his old friend, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, took him as a prisoner. And who saw this? Bilal ibn Rabah, who was tortured by Umayyah ibn Khalaf in the desert by putting rocks on him. Bilal said, by Allah, this is never going to happen. He's my prisoner. Abdul Rahman bin Auf said, but I got him and all of his loot. Bilal said, oh Muslims, would you all accept for me to be tortured by this man? And then this man walks free. They all said, Abdul Rahman, give him to Bilal. So Bilal took him and finished him. This battle had in it, وَيَشْفِ سُدُورَ قَوْمِ mu'minin. By this battle, Allah purifies the hearts of a believing people. Until the Prophet laid down Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab and Umayyah bin Khalaf and every single one of the leaders of Quraysh and he spoke to them. He said, you, you called me a liar and yet today I found what my Lord promised me to be true. Have you found what your gods promised you to be true? They said, O Messenger of Allah, you speak to people who are dead? The Prophet wasallam said, Wallahi, you can hear me no better than they can except that they can't answer. And then the prisoners of war were taken and the Prophet ﷺ began to now handle the issue of the prisoners of war. But this is what happened in this most glorious and illustrious battle, which happened on the Sabiha of the 17th of Ramadan. And it was a Friday for them and it was a blessed day. And for us, we seek to take some of that blessing in what we call Al-Badriya, which is a dis talk about Badr and mention of the Sahaba of Badr. And may Allah Ta'ala accept this from us. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanallah. Wow. What a beautiful story of the, uh, look at these comments coming in. Mashallah, all of the creation around Sheikh Shadi will be testifying for him on the Day of Judgment for teaching us this beneficial knowledge of our Prophet Sallallahu and the Sahaba. MashaAllah, the comments coming in are so beautiful. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Um, uh, we have here from Adam Grubb. Uh, the Grubb family love the green cloak. MashaAllah, a lot of, a lot of uh, beautiful uh, comments about the background as well. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. How are you all enjoying the webinar so far? We're, we're, we're getting closer to the end, uh, the recitation of the names of the, those at Badr, MashaAllah. But we, uh, we love to hear from the audience. MashaAllah, uh, we're getting so many comments. We have over 400 devices connected. We got close to 500 devices connected. Continue sharing it because we still have more teachers coming up, uh, including uh, uh, Sheikha Maryam Amir, Sheikh Yahya Rodas, Sheikha Aisha Prime, uh, Brother Sinan. So we, we still have more to go, inshallah. And if you're enjoying it, take a moment because this really helps celebrate mercy if you just click on the like button YouTube will start to recommend this live stream, this video to other people who are just brand, you know, randomly browsing YouTube. 
if we get a lot of likes, a lot of comments, and hopefully a lot of you are subscribing. We're hoping that at least 313 of you will subscribe to our YouTube channel today. And I have some good news that we are almost there, guys. With We wanted to fundraise for $17,000 during this webinar, and we are at $14,000 the last I checked a few minutes ago. SubhanAllah, we are so close to unlocking this generous grant from one of our donors who said, if you can raise 17000 I will match it. I will match it dollar for dollar. So that is our goal. And remember when you're donating, inshallah, donate on behalf of asking Allah to, to, to gift the donation, the blessings of your donation to the Badr heroes, to the heroes at Badr. And I'm saying the word heroes because I remember our brother Herbert during our Umrah, Umrah trip, he always referred to the Sahaba as heroes. And so that's the, that's what I'm, that's the word I'm using because they are our heroes. So honor the Badr heroes. When you go to our Launch Good page, you can even donate exactly $313 in honor of our better heroes or or inc or increase it inshallah or increase it don't forget we have that generous donor matching up to 17000 and this is the link to donate inshallah and when you go to our launch good page you can learn about all the different initiatives that we are raising funds for including there's one fund that is zakat eligible a scholarship fund as well so if you're looking to give your zakat this scholarship fund has benefited almost 2000 people in the last 4 years with books with assistance to attend pro learning programs as well. So you can do that. Just make sure you email us after you donate to make sure that we we only use Zakat for that purpose for, towards Zakat eligible individuals uh, who cannot afford books and learning programs. Many prisoners benefit from this as well. We send books to inmates as well. If you're giving sadaqa donations, then there's also beautiful gifts for those who donate sadaqa, inshallah, at the different giving levels, like $1,000 and $2,000, these gifts are worth, some of them, hundreds of dollars, like the three-foot wooden sandal. There's even a bottle of olive oil that is pressed from the olives that are grown in the Haram in Jerusalem. These are from the olive trees of Masjid al-Aqsa, of the Haram in Aqsa. These are, this is olive oil from those blessed uh, olive trees that are in the Haram, in the sacred uh, precinct of Jerusalem, uh, subhanAllah. And this is mentioned in the Quran where Allah says that he has blessed the surroundings, not just Masjid al-Aqsa, but the surroundings of Masjid al-Aqsa. So this is blessed olive oil, very short supply, but we have 20 sh small bottles that we can gift to those who are donating at the $10,000 level. And just recognize also that a big portion of the donations is also helping to seed our endowment fund. If we hit our goal, for Ramadan, then three out of $10 donated will go to the endowment fund, which will be long-term for decades and centuries to come. Your donation will still be having an impact, inshallah, helping kids and teenagers and adults learn about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and recite salawat and learn about the shama'il of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And make sure you've checked out all of our Ramadan programming. We have a lot of programming in Ramadan. 100 webinars in 30 days, alhamdulillah, and we're always getting testimonials. We have hundreds of these testimonials about the impact that Celebrate Mercy has been having on the people viewing them. I could show you hundreds of webinar of, of testimonials like this. So inshallah, we hope that you've been benefiting from our programming and our publications and uh, our trips and our conferences and our social media posts, inshallah. And thank you for all of your support. And if you'd like to continue supporting in Ramadan, helping us get closer to our goal, go to launchgood.com slash CM. We'll update you if we get to that 17,000. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and bring uh, Sheikha Maryam to the stage, inshallah. Uh, I'm going to introduce her. And after Sheikha Maryam, we have Sheikh Yahya Rodas, who will be coming up next as well, uh, inshallah. Um, Sheikha Maryam received her master's in education from UCLA. She holds a second bachelor's degree in Islamic studies from Al-Azhar University. She studied in Egypt, memorized the Quran, has researched a variety of religious sciences, mashallah, for the past 15 years. And she's been interviewed by major media outlets as well. And she's the creator of the Qari'a app, which is an app for women uh, Quran reciters. Uh, mashallah, it's available on Google Play and Apple stores. 
or on karia.app, Q-A-R-I-A-H dot A-P-P. Uh, mashallah. So let's go ahead and sh- play the video that we got from Sheikha Maryam just a couple of hours ago. Mashallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Hamdan kathiran, tayyiban, mubarakan fih. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. In Ramadan, we often feel like we should be able to focus fully on worship. And for us, oftentimes, worship means ritual worship. Salah and Qur'an, tarawih, suyam, dhikr, dua, all of these beautiful, heart-touching, soul-nourishing acts. Many times we think of Ramadan as an opportunity to isolate ourselves religiously, not religiously, but spiritually, spiritually, in the sense of we should be able to just remove all barriers of concentration and only focus on bringing our dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whispering to Him and weeping to Him and building that intimate connection with Him. And all of that is completely true, of course. For anyone who has become a parent uh, after maybe having spent their college years in the masjid or having spent some time being able to give this full focus and then becoming parents and realizing that, subhanAllah, you have absolutely no control over your time. If you get five minutes to make a private dua with focus, it's probably because they shockingly went to bed early and you actually have the energy to do it. You want to read more Quran, but every time you try, they're calling you or you want to be able to focus on tahajjud, but you're exhausted and you may not even be able to play, pray more than the obligation if they're young children in particular. So that shift of experiencing Ramadan in that very sweet, personal, vulnerable, intimate way really changes. Having had this expectation that Ramadan is going to be about one-on-one focus and having experienced that to then shift and having Ramadan be all about a different type of worship. That's the worship of caring for others. That's the worship of removing the burden from someone else, your children, when you change their diaper or take them to, you know, play at the park or whatever it is, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you in different ways. And that those different ways don't always feel as sweet. And so this idea, and of course it tastes sweet in the sense of you're building relationships with your children, but it may not taste as sweet in terms of you building your faith. But this concept of isolating oneself in Ramadan, of making Ramadan a time of just focused worship, we need to also ask ourselves, have we seen that in the life of the Prophet ﷺ in every moment of Ramadan? Because absolutely we learn from the Prophet ﷺ and the companions that there were times that they just focused in itikaf, that they just focused in the masjid, that they had this focused worship. But there were other times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this month a month of extreme difficulty, a month of trial, a month of triumph, yes, but also a month of loss. When the Battle of Badr took place, it was in the month of Ramadan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left and he knew that his daughter Ruqayya radiallahu anha was sick. Uthman radiallahu anhu did not participate in Badr because he was left with his wife Ruqayya radiallahu anha nursing her and taking care of her. The Prophet ﷺ went for Badr with the companions. And of course, the circumstances of Badr and the way that it happened wasn't the same as another uh, battle in which there were these huge uh, preparations and everyone knew they were going into this huge battle. They faced those who were against the Muslims and felt their numbers were so small. Their their provision, their tools were not equipped for this enormous battle. And this is something that we really can take away in Ramadan, that even though they were not prepared for a battle of this magnitude, they faced it anyway. They faced it with trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they faced it with intense dua that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made intense, intense, intense dua before Badr. They faced it knowing that they were fighting for the sake of the truth. 
Now today, we may have trials and tests, and sometimes we wonder why we are given them. But there are circumstances in which we may not feel prepared, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills that they happen in a particular time of our lives. And in that particular time, our biggest worship is not to walk away from the battlefield and say, I'd rather just go to the masjid because I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love me more in the masjid. Of course, Allah loves when you go to the masjid. But what if you have someone who you love who is sick and they are hospitalized? Should you leave them because it's Ramadan? When you know that your presence brings them peace and comfort, when you know that your presence as an advocate for their medical rights is critical, when you know that they need to see you? Is this not your own type of struggle, your own type of fight in the month in which Badr took place? Sometimes you may not feel ready for the tests. None of us are ready for tests. But sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that this has to happen in this time of your life for a reason. And, and sometimes we can't know the reason. And I don't mean to imply that this has anything to do with abuse. It's not about abuse. It's not about someone else harming someone else's rights. But I'm talking about the type of test or trial that someone sometimes goes through. And then maybe 10 to 15 years later, they look back and they say, SubhanAllah, I had to go through that at that time in my life to be able to get to this point in my life and in my relationship with Allah. There was a sister who was talking about how she had gotten really difficult news about the home that she had uh, been renting and they had to leave immediately. And subhanAllah, Allah facilitated for them not only to move to a better place, alhamdulillah, that they wouldn't have even imagined before, but also to have neighbors Neighbors who were so caring and who made them feel safe and made them feel welcome. And that was something they had never experienced previously in their neighborhood. So sometimes these notices come at a time that is unexpected and with immense difficulty. But we never know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stored for us in the long run. That being said, the Battle of Badr was a time in which the companions actually got the glad tidings of victory. The angels supported the companions. And did you know that the angels support you? I talk about the angels a lot. So perhaps you've heard me here speak about this. But the angels are beings of light. They have been ordered to do certain acts. And one of those acts is to protect you. It's to make dua for you. It's to roam the earth looking for you reciting the Quran. And the angels were ordered to go to the Prophet ﷺ's companions, to the Prophet ﷺ, and defend them and fight on their behalf in Badr. Did you know that you can have angels fighting on your behalf? SubhanAllah, angels making dua for you. Angels who are invested in you, in your protection. That this is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we look at Badr, it was victory. Alhamdulillah, clear victory for the Muslims. That joy and that celebration in Ramadan is incredible. But the Prophet وسلم, came back to Medina to find that his daughter Ruqayyah anha had not just passed away, but she had already been buried. He didn't get to see her body anha, to say goodbye to her physical form. The Prophet وسلم, went back to find she was already back into the ground. And the joy and the excitement of a victory like Badr is tempered, subhanAllah, tempered with the immense loss and trial and tribulation and pain of losing his daughter, radiallahu anha. We know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lost every child in his lifetime. And that Fatima radiallahu anha was told that she would pass away by him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was a prophecy that came true, that she was the, the, the next to pass away of his kin, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He wasn't spared the pain of her loss even as he was passing away, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the news of Ruqayya radiallahu anha's passing was in Ramadan. He lost his daughter in Ramadan, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I want to share that with you 
because if you are going through pain and loss, if you are struggling with Ramadan and mental health, if you are navigating Ramadan and isolation or depression, if you feel like you can't connect in this month because emotionally you just have so many other responsibilities, it doesn't make your Ramadan any less blessed. It doesn't mean that your Ramadan is not one in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not counted as so beloved to him. It means that you're having a Ramadan like the Ramadan in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam lost his daughter. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That didn't make it any less of a Ramadan for the companions, the community of the Prophet, peace be upon him. It didn't make it any less of a Ramadan for the Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Complete your Ramadan with hope in him. It is worship to be optimistic in Allah. And being optimistic looks like accepting that part of life is loss and that part of loss is a form of connection with him, with vulnerability and pain and closest to him in a way that sometimes we may not ever, ever be able to understand. But we can take it to dua. We can take all of that to dua. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to hear our voices. MashaAllah, Jazakumallah khair to Sheikha Maryam. MashaAllah, we're getting some beautiful comments, including from my beloved brother Herbert. MashaAllah, I'm glad that you're tuning in. I, I mentioned you earlier in the program, MashaAllah. Um, and uh, so many beautiful comments coming in from these uh, from these teachers and from the audience. Uh, and the gems from the teachers, MashaAllah, Khadija, who said, it's 12.30 a.m. here, but I can stay the whole night if we have these beautiful teachers MashaAllah, and Shagufta who said, SubhanAllah, MashaAllah, very powerful words, real Iman booster, Jazakumallahu Khair, and Vera uh, making dua for Celebrate Mercy for all this great programming, Alhamdulillah, just amazing, amazing comments. We love to hear from you all, we love to hear from you all, MashaAllah, these comments that you're sharing are really, really beautiful, MashaAllah, and it looks like you all are still sharing the webinar because we are steadily still uh at over 400 uh, devices connected. MashaAllah, we have, uh, without Celebrate Mercy, my Ramadan would feel a bit lonely. Uh, Carolyn from Ger Germany. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Thank you all for these beautiful comments. We will be bringing Sheikh Yahya to the stage here in just a minute. Um, we are getting very, very close to that $17,000 goal uh, because uh, that was the goal for, for the, to, to unlock that matching grant. So we are now at 15,000, inshallah. Uh, and that was, you know, the last I checked about 15,000. Uh, and the matching donor said that he would don't match up to 17,000. But even if you're watching the recording and we've met this goal, please still donate because we are very far from our overall, uh, our overall goal. We started this webinar, we were at 15, that's one five, 15% of our uh, goal for, the entire month of Ramadan. So we definitely could use your help. I think we're now probably at 17%. We're at 17% right now of our Ramadan goal overall uh, on the 17th day of Ramadan. But Ramadan is not 100 days long. So we should be well beyond 17% of our Ramadan goal, inshallah. Uh, you can make your donation, inshallah, at launchgood.com slash CM. And you'll even find a giving level that we added today on the LaunchGood page $313. Make your donation, whatever donation amount you give, make it with the intention that I'm donating on behalf of the heroes of Badr. I'm donating on behalf of the heroes of Badr. And inshallah, they will thank you for doing a good deed on their behalf uh, when we meet them on the day of judgment. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. And I want to just thank our donors again for all you've been supporting us, mashallah. We've also, we're really, really happy about the kids programs we've been doing. Seven kids programs in the last 18 months, mashallah. 13,000 kids have enrolled in these children's programs in the last year and a half, alhamdulillah, including the most recent one, which is going on. Actually, it's going to be starting at 6 o'clock, 6.15 p.m. today, the next episode, the next session of the Walking Quran, mashallah. And we've also been able to do seven and help with seven publications over the last two years 
Five of those are children's publications. One of them was an Amazon bestseller for uh, Islamic books on Amazon and Islamic children's books as well, alhamdulillah. So thank you all for your support and hopefully you all have been uh, subscribing to our YouTube channel and you've clicked like on this video as well. Now we're going to bring to the stage, inshallah, Sheikh Yahya Rodas. Uh, inshallah, I'm going to introduce him and he's going to be sharing some of the lessons we should remember from the from this uh, commemoration of the Battle of Badr, from this story of Badr, inshallah. Um, let me just check one thing. Mashallah. Uh, okay, so Sheikh Yahya Rodas is the founding director of Al Maqasid, an Islamic seminary whose vision is to facilitate the realization of Islam, Iman, and Ihsan through immersion in the prophetic inheritance. The concept of Al Maqasid emerged from his own journey, which began at the traditional school of Murabat al Hajj. May Allah have mercy on his soul. Uh, in the desert of Mauritania, shortly after his conversion. His path of learning then led him to the acclaimed school Dar al-Mustafa in Tarim, where he received instruction from the renowned scholar Habib Omar. And after graduating from Dar al-Mustafa and returning to the United States, he studied in a number of academic institutions, culminating in a PhD in theology and religious studies from the University of Cambridge in England. MashaAllah. So without any further delay, inshallah, we're honored to uh, to be joined by Sheikh Yahya on this blessed day of Ramadan, this blessed 17th day of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Yahya. Alaikum salam, rahmatullahi barakatuh. I had a question for you. I know you all have a commemoration of Badr at Al Maqasid in, uh, at 6 p.m. That's right, that's soon. right. Is that going to be streamed live? It will, it will. Okay. Inshallah. So I do want to encourage everyone in, in less than in about two hours, Al Maqasid, Al Maqasid will have a commemoration of the, the Battle of Badr, inshallah. And uh, you all should tune in through the Al Maqasid YouTube and social media, inshallah. You all stream on Facebook and YouTube? I think primarily YouTube. YouTube, Al Maqasid YouTube at 6 p.m. Eastern, inshallah. So we're, we're looking forward to your, uh, to your beautiful uh, gems, inshallah. God bless you, honey. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala. I am thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to share this moment on such a blessed day with all of my fellow brothers and sisters and all who are watching currently and who will watch inshallah ta'ana. And the battle of Badr is one of the great moments where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to the believers this very special day, the Yawm al-Furqan, is from the Ayyam of Allah, it's from the days of Allah. And I've been asked to summarize some of the lessons. And really you cannot enumerate them because there's so many, but I'm going to be focusing on seven great lessons that we can take from this battle, speaking about a minute on each one, bi'ithni lahi ta'ala. But just before I get into that, I did want to say, in to emphasize the importance of you and I having emotional attachments to these blessed events of the Sirah. As Sheikh Yasser Fahmi, may Allah protect and preserve him, said, this is sacred history. The purpose of studying this battle is not just to re read a historical narrative. It's so that you and I can be involved with it and that we can learn from it and to bring the core principles and meanings of it into our own lives. And one of the greatest ways that we can do it is seeing it as being from Allah, a manifestation of one of the ayam of Allah, the great days of Allah, where in which he gives victory to the prophets and the messengers and his special people, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first lesson that I wanted to highlight is one of patience. And if we think about the companions and everything that is they went through and the battle of Badr coming in the second year of the hijra 14 plus years passed after having been persecuted after having seen right before their eyes so many terrible things happen to their fellow believers they were not permitted to fight back what this teaches us and we should always remember even though we were not there to fight in the battle of Badr you and I fight every single day on the battleground of life. Every single one of us goes out to the battleground every single day. 
and everything that it is that we are facing. And I think that our dear sister, Sheikha Maryam, for saying those beautiful words, that consoling hearts that don't have experiences like everybody else do to situations that they that are experiencing in this blessed month of Ramadan, life is a battleground. And these principles of the Battle of Badr can equally be applied in every single one of our lives. And we just have to know what they are. <clears throat> the first is patience. Think about the amount of time that the companions had to remain patient before they are allowed to fight back. 13 plus years, 14 plus years. And I think in many of our situations in our lives, sometimes the response is not to respond. It is simply to wait it out. It is simply to be patient and wait for the doors to open. So I'll leave it to your imaginations and your that powers of reflection to think about how that pertains to your own life. All of the situations where you have no other choice other than to remain patient. But by remaining patient, eventually the faraj, the relief will come. The second meaning is one of loyalty. This is one of the lost qualities of our time. And this is one of the abandoned sunnahs of our Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. We learn this so clearly in so many different ways from the Battle of Badr, but primarily from the great chieftain of the uh, Aus, that Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh. And that we learned in the very statement that he said, that this beautiful statement that we heard him say, but towards the end, what does he say? If you took us into the sea and plunged in, we would dive in with you. Allahu Akbar. They, even though they had previously only pledged to defend Medina from within, the Prophet wanted to ascertain, would they defend him outside of Medina and Munawwara? Look at this beautiful statement that is here before you and really reflect deeply on this. What is this telling of? This is telling of a heart that is alive with faith but has this great trait of loyalty. They made a pledge and even though it could have been a way out, no, he remained faithful to his pledge and he was loyal to our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Loyalty is a trait that you and I need to bring into our lives. And most importantly, we should be loyal to Allah loyal to the teachings of the Quran and loyal to our Prophet and the teachings that he brought. Bring loyalty in your life and always remain a principled person even if you think that there's an easy way out. There is no easy way out. There are no shortcuts. The aqibah, the end result, and ultimate outcome is for the people that have taqwa. If we remain principled, even if in the short term we find difficulty, the best possible resort will always happen in the long term in this world before the next. The third meaning is one of prayer. The importance of turning to Allah to Ta'ala in all of our affairs. Our Prophet was promised victory in the Battle of Badr. And despite this, he spent an extended amount of time imploring and beseeching his Lord the night before. He even showed the companions on the day before the places where the dead bodies of the disbelievers were going to fall. And the narrator swore an oath is that the body didn't move a hand span from where the Prophet said that it was going to fall. Despite this, he spends the night in prayer. And the meaning that you and I can learn from this is that Allah Ta'ala in Tan Surah Allah if you give victory to Allah, and all of its means, Allah will give victory to you. If you are faithful to your Lord, Allah will give you a way out and he will help you. But we want to be people of prayer. We want to be people who turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of our affairs. So if you have an important affair, and it could be some type of tribulation that you're going through, a sickness that you've lost your job, or there's something that you hope for, for a family member or for your own self or someone else. We learn from the Battle of Badr to turn to Allah to Barakatan in prayer. Anytime that you want something during the day, the night before, it might not be as long as the Prophet did it, but spend a period of time, even a little bit before bed, but preferably wake up at night before Salat al Fajr and turn to Allah and ask Allah to help you with that particular matter prayer. So we have patience, loyalty, prayer, and then the fourth trait is courage. 
oh, how important of a trait courage is. There are some people that have analysis paralysis that they overanalyze and never ever end up doing other thing. And there are other people who that know what is that they want to do, but they fail to actually do it. We can learn from this battle, this great trait of courage. There is no way to be successful on the battleground of life if we are not people that have courage. We have to have courage. Think about those blessed companions as we heard, Ubaid ibn al-Hadith, that Sayyidina Hamza, Sayyidina Ali, going out to do duels with the three from the opposing army. Imagine the courage and that you are literally looking at death right before your eyes, that if you lose this fight, and all of the companions, those 313, we heard the difference of opinion about the numbers, that facing an army that was three plus times their amount, the amount of courage that they had to have to not falter or to waver. We need to bring that type of courage to the battleground of life. We have to have courage in life. And we have to have courage to overcome the difficulties that we have in life. The fifth meaning is the importance of the youth. And we find these amazing narrations of young people who were competing to fight in this battle with the Prophet Sallallahu And we have this blessed story of that these two young companions who wanted to be the ones who killed Abu Jahl because they realized that he had caused the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so much harm. And these two young men, that Mu'ad and Mu'awwad, they're the ones who the Allah Ta'ala actually blessed to both take part in that very act. But they were competing with one another. The story of Hadith, the that only that son to his blessed mother, and what happened to him in the battle, and the other youth that also fought. This teaches us a very important meaning, is that useful passion has to be directed and channeled. And if you and I don't think of a succession plan and consider very carefully the importance of the upcoming generation and to reach out to them, meet them where they are, to help them channel that youthful energy towards something that is beneficial, is that we will always be lacking as a community. So youth, and then the final two, we have one of Ihsan. Think about towards the end of the battle when the Prophet ﷺ took prisoners of war, which was part and parcel of war during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. What did he say? Treat the prisoners of better well. The companions had two different types of food. They gave the better of the type of food to the prisoners and took the lesser type of food for their own selves. This is the way that our Prophet was, and this is one of the great benefits of studying the Maghazi, the battles of the Prophet Sallallahu because you start to see how impeccable his character really was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said him, and then the final meaning, and which is one of the greatest of all, is the meaning of love. Yes, there are meanings of love throughout the battle of Badr. And one of the themes of Badr is sacrifice, but there's no sacrifice without love. And one of the greatest stories of all, one of the highlights of this battle is that blessed companion Sawad. And you can just imagine this, is that the armies are lining up and they're facing each other. And our Prophet Sallallahu was putting the companions in ranks. And this blessed companion, Sawad, he was standing out of line. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that poked him very gently, slight prick in his belly, that with his arrow. And then look what happens. He says, Oh, Messenger of Allah, you've hurt me. And he said, that Allah sent you with truth and justice, so give me my retribution. The Prophet said, Take it. And then that he said that it was that bear on his chest. So the Prophet lifts up his garment and then he proceeds to kiss the Prophet Sallallahu's blessed stomach. And you could just imagine in this moment. This shows, if you think about when you're about to take a test and your palms start to get sweaty or that you are standing before a judge to like talk about a ticket or something like that, or in times where you're nervous, what you think about in those moments is what is really ingrained in your heart. This is a battle. And this shows what was ingrained in the heart of the companions. This was ingrained in their hearts, deep, deep, deep love for Allah and for his messenger and for the sake of Allah and for the sake of his messenger. And this is what we need. If we have this love 
it will be life changing. Nothing will transform you like love. Nothing will change you like love. Nothing will open up doors of goodness for you in this world like true religious spiritual love for Allah and his messenger. And we see this very clearly in this blessed story, in this blessed narrative, in this blessed battle. And this is what enabled them to sacrifice as they did. And if we can bring this love into our life, everything at that point will change. And imagine that if your worship is one of love, you love to worship and you worship because Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has commanded you to do so and out of gratitude, if we do this, that everything will be very different for us. May Allah Ta'ala bring these meanings into our life, the meanings of patience, the meanings of loyalty, the meanings of prayer and of courage and of focusing on building the youth of ihsan and love. May Allah Ta'ala give us to we can bless us to benefit from this commemoration year in and year out and may these meanings that penetrate our existence ya arham ar rahmin wa sallallahu ala sayyid muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin and that uh, just one last thing before we uh, they move on to the next segment uh, sayyid tariq had asked me to mention something about the importance of the names of the people of Badr. This is what we've seen and seen in the traditional Muslim world, is that these 313 blessed individuals who fought in this verse of battle, is that they are special. They have a special rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we all know. And by mentioning their names, mercy descends. And it's a means for faraj. It's a means for Allah Ta'ala to grant relief to the Ummah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a Sufyan ibn Uyayna who's from the early Salaf he used to say and the dhikr salihin tanzal rahma when the righteous are mentioned mercy descends and so when you mention the great names of these individuals mercy descends this is as they used to say about some of the Asanid that the names in these chains of a hadith back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that they were so special that were you to read them in front of a person who is insane that they would regain their sanity so there's a secret in mentioning the names of special people and that how many times do we see in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that that says Udhkur, mention 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 and there's a mentioning of the names of the prophets and messengers there's a mention of the stories of the special people who came before us so inshallah ta'ala there'll be immense blessing in it not only for those who are listening but also for all of those in wherever areas that they are that the blessings will spread in widespread ta'ala Jazakumallah khair to uh, our dear teacher, Sheikh Yahya Rodas, mashallah. So many beautiful comments coming in as well. You know, just look at these comments from the audience. I'm amazed at how brave these Muslims were, how even after being persecuted so badly, they so bravely fought at Badr, subhanAllah. What, we have such amazing role models to be like. Uh, all the teachers are amazing. May Allah bless them. Love, celebrate mercy. I always learn something new every year and commenting on the talk by Sheikh Maryam. I'm grieving the loss of my beloved friend. So grateful for this. Uh, mashallah. Uh, Jazakallah khair. I will share uh, about Sheikh Maryam's talk. I will share with my mom as my brother passed the day before Ramadan. Uh, mashallah. Uh, and, you know, uh, Noor saying, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Yahya. So nice to see you here. Looking forward to joining the event later on at Al Maqasid. Uh, mashallah. And we shared the link to the Al Maqasid. A program, you can go to our live chat and click on the link. Uh, keep that tab open at 6 p.m. There will be the uh, commemoration of Badr with Al Maqasid and the, and the teachers there. MashaAllah, astounding messages and very relatable to daily life. What a beautiful message to turn to Allah and also give dawah for, uh, for tahajjud. Uh, MashaAllah, have courage, uh, bring loyalty to life, loyalty to Allah, loyalty to the Prophet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to be loyal to him and his beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ameen. Like the, I like the criteria, remain principled even when it's hard. Uh, seven powerful points of reference and guidance. Ma mashallah. All these beautiful comments, I can't even read them all. There's so many. Uh, or we'll just be here for so long, mashallah. But the comments keep pouring in. Jazakallah khair to Sheikh Yahya and all the teachers, mashallah. Um, we also have Sheikh Aisha Prime joining us here. Uh, she will also she will lead us actually in a dua before we start reciting the names. So Sheikh Aisha Prime, she actually was delayed on a flight. She was supposed to speak 
uh, earlier in the program. Actually, we had to quickly change things around because she was stuck on the tarmac for a flight. And uh, and we had to push her to the end because she was late, uh, subhanAllah. Um, but, uh, you know, khitamuhu misk, alhamdulillah. So we will have uh, Sheikha Aisha Prime uh, joining us here, uh, mashallah. And, uh, you know, Sheikha Aisha is also going to be joining later today for the kids program uh, later in the evening. So maybe the adults can be tuning in to Al Maqasid and the children, young children can be tuning in, you know, if you're between five and 11 years old to the kids program tonight with Sheikha Aisha as well. That'll be at the same time, uh, mashallah. Um, so we're excited to have Sheikha Aisha joining us tonight for the children's program, uh, mashallah. So I'm going to go ahead and hand the floor over to uh, Sheikha Aisha. Um, and uh, it's great to have you with us. Alhamdulillah, we're glad you made it to where you were going. me too. <laughs> <laughs> me too, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Ramadan Mubarak wa kula amu antum bukhaya to all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just continue to bless us to be able to receive the fullness of this blessed month and all of the blessings and openings and light that it has to offer. Jazakum la khair, Sheikh Yahya, for those beautiful insights and just reminding us about having courage you know, even as it's each of the teachers, subhanAllah, are talking, there's just so many, so many lessons and gems for us to take into our own life. And one of them being never despair of the mercy of Allah, right? Like in those moments where they were persecuted all those times before that, that Allah, that Allah was just prepping them, right? Prepping their hearts to be soft, to be able to receive, subhanAllah, the, the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with humility, and so may Allah bless bless them and bless us. So with that being said, you know, in our attempt to being loyal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in our attempt of never despairing of his mercy, in our attempt to connect to Allah during this blessed month, through, you know, through this moment, right? Through the barakah of this moment, we make dua, inshallah. So bismillah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa Salatu Wa Salam Ana Sayyidina Wa Habibina Wa Mawlana Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam Ya Awalin Awalin Ya Al Akhirin Akhirin Ya Dhuquwatin Matin Ya Rahmin Masakin Ya Arhamu Rahmin Ya Arhamu Rahmin Ya Arhamu Rahmin Ya Rabbi Thank You For Allowing Us To Be Muslim At This Moment In This Time Ya Rabbi Thank You For Allowing Us To Be Amongst Those That You've Chosen To Witness The Month Of Ramadan Ya Rabbi, thank you for allowing us to be amongst those who even know these names that are connected to the Battle of Badr, to know this history. Thank you, Ya Rabbi, for connecting us to this sacred history. Ya Rabbi, we ask that you please open up our hearts and illuminate us, Ya Rabbi, by the barakah of this day, by the barakah and the, the power of this day. Ya Rabbi, we ask that you please make us amongst those who are steadfast in our loyalty to you. Ya Rabbi, make us steadfast in our courage. Bless us to represent this deen, Ya Rabbi, without a wavering of our faith. Ya Rabbi, we ask that you please, just as you blessed those who fought in the battle of Badr, Ya Rabbi, bless us to have that kind of fortitude, to have that love for the Prophet, to have that love for you, that we would fight for you and, and sacrifice ourselves, Ya Rabbi, if you called us to it. Ya Rabbi, we ask that you please mold and shape us into servants of yours with whom you're well pleased. Give us a heart, Ya Rabbi, that is illuminated by you that is guided by you ya rabbi we ask you that you please grant us the kind of character ya rabbi that is molded by you bless us with speech and actions and behavior ya rabbi that it that brings us near and close to you and take us away from speech or actions or behavior, Ya Rabbi, that take us away from you, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, we ask you by your mercy that you give us victory over our weaknesses. Ya Rabbi, grant us victory over our trauma. Ya Rabbi, grant us victory over all the harms that we have endured, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, grant us victory of those who wish to harm us individually, Ya Rabbi, and the collective Muslims. Ya Rabbi, we ask that you please, by your mercy, grant us a victory from you in every aspect of our life. Bless us to be amongst those who have foes on Adima. Bless us to be amongst those, Ya Rabbi, who have remembrance of you in the best way, who honor what you've honored. Ya Rabbi, bless us to be those who honor who you've honored. Ya Allah, gather us on Yawm Qiyamah, Ya Rabbi, with those who fought in the battle of Badr, for surely they will be next to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa 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 ya Rabbi, bless us to be close to him. Bless us to stand next to him. Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi, we ask that 
even before we get to Yom Qiyamah, allow us to see, to be a witness to the Prophet and our dreams throughout our life consistently, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, grant us a nearness and a close to Habib Allah, Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Ya Rabbi, grant us an intimacy with you, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, by this month of the Quran, we ask that you teach us the Quran, Ya Rabbi, that which we're ignorant of. Ya Rabbi, give, grant us insight into the hikmah, into the wisdom of the Quran, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, grant us the courage and the strength and the steadfastness and the iman and the taqwa to obey its, its commandments and to avoid its prohibitions, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, we ask you by your mercy that you bless us to be amongst those that are resurrected with La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on our tongues. Ya Rabbi, just as you came to the rescue of those who fought in the battle of Badr, Ya Rabbi, come to our rescue. Ya Rabbi, come to our rescue against those who wish to who, who wish to put out the light of this deen. Ya Rabbi, come to the rescue, come to our rescue against those, Ya Rabbi, who wish to harm us, who wish to who wish to cause us trauma, Ya Rabbi, who wish to violate us. Ya Rabbi, come to our to the rescue of our children, Ya Rabbi, who have fallen, Ya Rabbi, along this way and in this path. Come to come to our rescue, Ya Rabbi, in our ignorance. Ya Rabbi, illuminate us with a light from your light and a knowledge from your knowledge, Ya Rabbi, and a dignity from your dignity, Ya Alimu, Ya Azizu, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, we ask that you please come to the come to the rescue of Masjid Al Aqsa. Come to the rescue of the Muslims in Palestine. Ya Rabbi, come to the rescue of those in Syria. Ya Rabbi, those in Yemen, those in Sudan and Somalia. Ya Rabbi, come to the rescue to the Muslims all over the world, wheresoever they may be. Ya Rabbi, come to our rescue in America. Ya Rabbi, come to the rescue of our Iman. Ya Rabbi, save us from every form of ghafla or heedlessness. Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, come to our rescue against the evil of our nafs and our ego. Ya Allah, make us from amongst those that are beloved to you. Envelop us, Ya An Muhaymin, in your fortress of protection. Ya An Wadud, grant us the comfort and the cradle, Ya Rabbi, of your love and of your care, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi, in any of our family members that aren't guided, Ya Rabbi, guide them to this way. Guide them to this path, Ya Rabbi, and bless them to see the truth and the light of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Rabbi, cause us to live and die upon this deen. Ya Rabbi, cause us to be resurrected upon this. Allow us to take a drink from the hand of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on Yom Qiyamah from the Blessed Hawd. Allow us to walk hand in hand and to cross the Surat, Ya Rabbi, with him into Jannah to Firdaus al Us and our entire lineage and our progeny and our loved ones, Ya Allah. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina wa Habibina wa Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen afwa minkum wa jazakum wa nao khair. Jazakumallah khair to Sheikha Aisha Prime, mashallah. Uh, always an honor to have you with us. Uh, we always love to hear from you, your beautiful lessons and your beautiful du'as, uh, and especially your du'as, you know, on our during our Umrah trips and at Masjid Al-Aqsa. If you haven't uh, made Umrah with Sheikha Aisha, uh, you should, <laughs> inshallah. You know, a tawaf with her, leading the tawaf, leading the sa'i, and her du'as are beautiful, mashallah, bringing us always closer to Allah uh, during those trips um, and during all the programs where she teaches, mashallah. We're always so honored to have her uh, her with us, mashallah. We have so many comments coming in. I can't share them all. There's, I'm behind here on 95 different comments, mashallah. But a lot of amins, I see a lot of amins, uh, a lot of amins, mashallah. Um, uh, Sheikh Aisha, there's a message here from Herbert. Uh, good to see you, Sheikha Ramadan Mubarak, mashallah. She, she was with us on the trip as well. The tears are definitely flowing from that beautiful dua, mashallah, mashallah. So we are about to go to the recitation of the names of the 313, mashallah. And you know what? I wanted to show you all something that really, uh, subhanAllah, brought me to tears when I realized it. But I was looking through our uh, Sira slides here. One second, let me show you something that's pretty amazing. Uh, mashallah. There is the verse in the Quran about the battle of Badr. And I want to ask the audience, what amazing miracle do you see about this verse? And I'll give you a hint. Look at the top line 
look at the top line of this PowerPoint slide. Can you share in the comments? What's the miracle here? Share in the comments. What, what do you see at the very top of the slide? What's amazing here? Three thirteen exactly. The ayah in the Quran about surah uh, about the battle of Badr is three thirteen. Uh, surah three verse thirteen. Isn't that amazing? I just realized that. What do you what do you think about that CD, Sinan? Oh, you're muted, CD. Allahu Akbar. Did you know that? C CD, Subhanallah. This is this is the first time to to, to yeah. know about this. Mashallah. <laughs> MashaAllah, <laughs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu yeah. Akbar. Uh, this is when, when we learn about the Quran that has mer has an infinite miracles. And subhanAllah, this is this is this is one of them. MashaAllah. I didn't know that until I just was looking through the slides. I was like, where do I find this ayah? And I looked at the top, I was like, wait, 313. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Jazakumullah khair, Sidi, for bringing this up. And uh, subhanAllah, I, I'm, including myself, uh, I didn't know about this before. It's my yeah. first time to hear about this. Allahu yeah. Akbar. SubhanAllah. Amazing. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you back in just one minute. I'm going to just have an announcement and then I'll bring you right back for the recitation. Jazakumullah. Inshallah. Sidi. Okay, so let me go back to my other slides. Uh, I was going to share an exciting announcement that we were now at sixteen thousand for the um, for that uh, for the matching grant. Alhamdulillah. So we're really grateful to you all for all your support. Uh, we just have about a thousand more to go, and then we will unlock that matching grant from the donors. Alhamdulillah. So we are this this slide. I didn't have a slide for sixteen, but we are actually at sixteen, not fifteen, right now. We're at 16,000 raised during this webinar. Uh, and we want to encourage you all to support, inshallah, because we have a donor who is matching up to 17,000. And we want to encourage you when you donate today or when you're watching the recording, when you make a donation to Celebrate Mercy, make your intention. I'm donating on behalf of the heroes of Badr. And we're about to hear their names beautifully recited with a dua for them. And as Sheikh Yahya said, when we hear the names of these awliya, of these beloved friends of Allah, then it brings blessings to our home. When you just when you just hear the names, that's why we should name our children beautiful names, the names of prophets and the names of our uh, our you know the companions and the names of the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you just hear the names, Baraka descends, Baraka descends. Alhamdulillah. So when you go to the Launch Good page, there's actually a, a giving level. You can give exactly three hundred and thirteen dollars or give more. Inshallah. Um, and this is the link again to donate. Jazakumullah khair. And after the recitation, don't forget, we will have two raffles for anyone who donated 313 or more. We will be choosing someone to win the wooden sandal. It's a $500 handmade piece. And all of those who are using the hashtag today, when you're posting about the program, we will have you in another raffle right after that to, to win another wooden sandal as well, inshallah. And if you're donating on our Launch Good page, there are a lot of gifts you can read about, inshallah, as well. And don't forget, you can read also about the Zakat Eligible Scholarship Fund. If you're donating Zakat, make sure to email us so we allocate your donation properly as Zakat funds, which we strictly use for Zakat eligible individuals for, for a scholarship fund, inshallah. Um, but uh, Jazakumullah khair for all the support. Let's go now to the recitation of these blessed names of uh, of our heroes of Badr, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What a beautiful program. Jazallahu khair, uh, all our teachers for the great reflections. And I encourage you, uh, while we're reciting the names of, of the heroes, uh, uh, to inshallah reflect and uh, with all the meanings that our teachers talked about. And inshallah to bring the barakah of mentioning those names, those heroes, uh, to our life, to our homes, to our kids, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Nabi al-Ummi Wa 
وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلِّمْ اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا أبي بن كعب الأخنس بن خبيب الأرقم بن أبي الأرقم أسعد بن يزيد أنس بن معاذ أنس مولى النبي محمد أنيس بن قتادة أوس بن ثابت أوس بن خولي أوس بن الصامت إياس بن أوس إياس بن البكير بجير بن أبي بجير بحاث بن ثعلبة بسبسة بن عمرو بشر بن البراء بشير بن سعد بلال بن رباح تميم بن يعار تميم مولى غنم بن السلم اللهم ارض عنهم وجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم ارضى عن أسيادنا تميم مولى خراش ثابت بن أقرم ثابت بن ثعلبة ثابت بن خالد ثابت بن خنساء ثابت بن عمرو ثابت بن هزال ثعلبة بن حاطب ثعلبة بن عمرو ثعلبة بن عنمه ثقف بن عمرو جابر بن خالد جابر بن عبد الله جبار بن صخر جبر بن عتيك جبير بن إياس الحارث بن أنس بن مالك الحارث بن أوس بن رافع الحارث, الحارث بن أوس بن معاذ الحارث بن حاطب اللهم ارض عنهم وجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا الحارث بن خزمة الخزرجي الحارث بن خزمة الأوسي الحارث بن أبي خزمة الحارث بن الصمة الحارث بن عرفجة الحارث بن قيس الأوسي الحارث بن قيس الخزرجي الحارث بن النعمان حارثة بن سراقة حارثة بن النعمان حاطب بن أبي بلتعة حاطب بن عمرو الحباب بن المنذر حبيب بن الأسود حريث بن زيد الحصين بن الحارث حمزة بن الحمير حمزة بن عبد المطلب خارجة بن الحمير خارجة بن زيد 
اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا خالد بن البكير خالد بن قيس خباب بن الأرت خباب مولى عتبه خبيب بن إساف خبيب بن عدي حدا خداس بن قتاده خداس بن قتاده خراش بن الصمه خريم بن فاتك خلاد بن رافع خلاد بن سويد خلاد بن عمرو خلاد بن قيس خليد بن قيس خليفة بن عدي خليفة بن عدي خنيس بن حذافة خوات بن جبير خولي بن أبي خولي ذكوان بن عبد قيس ذكوان بن سعد اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا ذو الشمالين ابن عبد عمرو راشد بن المعلى رافع بن الحارث رافع بن المعلى رافع بن عن جده رافع بن مالك رافع بن يزيد ربعي بن رافع الربيع بن إياس ربيعة بن أكثم رخيلة بن ثعلبة رفاعة بن الحارث رفاعة بن رافع رفاعة بن عبد المنذر رفاعة بن عمرو خزياد بن السكن زياد بن عمرو زياد بن لبيد زياد بن أسلم زيد بن حارثة اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم 
اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا زيد بن الخطاب زيد بن المزين زيد بن المعلى زيد بن وديعة سالم بن عميد سالم مولى أبي حذيفة السائب بن عثمان بن مضعون سبرة بن فاتك سبيع بن قيس سراقة بن عمر سراقة بن كعب سعد بن خولة سعد بن خيثمة سعد بن الربيع سعد بن زيد سعد بن سعد سعد سعيد بن سهيل سعد بن عبادة سعد بن عبيد سعد بن عثمان اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا سعد بن معاذ سعد مولى حاطب سفيان بن بشر سلمة بن أسلم سلمة بن ثابت سلمة بن سلامة سليط بن قيس سليم بن الحارث سليم بن عمرو سليم بن قيس سليم بن بن مليحان سماك بن سعد سنان بن صيفي سنان بن أبي سنان سهل بن حنيف سهل بن رافع سهل بن عتيك سهل بن قيس سهل بن رافع سهيل بن وهب اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا سواد بن رزن سواد بن غزية سويبط بن حرملة شجاع بن وهم شريك بن بن أنس شماس بن عثمان صبيح مولى العاصي صفوان بن وهب صهيب بن سنان صيفي بن سواد الضحاك بن حارثة الضحاك بن عمرو ضم ضمرة بن عمرو الطفيل بن الحارث الطفيل بن مالك الطفيل بن النعمان طليب بن عمير طلحة بن عبيد الله عاصم بن ثابت عاصم بن عدي اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء 
صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا عاصم بن البكير عاصم بن قيس عاقل بن البكير عامر بن أمية عامر بن البكير عامر بن ربيعة عامر بن سعد عامر بن سلمة عامر بن فهيرة عامر بن مخلد عائذ بن ماعص عباد بن بشر عباد بن الخشخش عباد بن قيس بن عائشة عبادة بن الصامت عبد الله بن ثعلبة عبد الله بن جبير عبد الله بن جحش عبد الله بن الجد اللهم ارض عنهم وجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا عبد الله بن حمير عبد الله بن الربيع عبد الله بن رواحة عبد الله بن زيد عبد الله بن سراقة عبد الله بن سلمة عبد الله بن سهل عبد الله بن سهيل عبد الله بن شريك عبد الله بن طارق عبد الله بن عامر عبد الله بن عبد الله عبد الله بن مناف عبد الله بن عبس عبد الله بن عرفطه عبد الله بن عمر عبد الله بن عمير عبد الله بن قيس بن خلده عبد الله بن قيس بن صخر عبد الله بن كعب صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا عبد الله بن مخرمة عبد الله بن مسعود عبد الله بن مضعون عبد الله بن النعمان عبد الرحمن بن جبر عبد رب بن حق عبس بن عامر عبيد بن أوس عبيد بن التيهان عبيد بن زيد 
عبيد بن أبي عبيد عبيدة بن الحارث عتبان بن مالك عتبة بن الربيعة عتبة بن بن ربيعة عتبة بن عبد الله عتبة بن غزوان عثمان بن مظعون العجلان بن النعمان عدي بن أبي الزوباء عصمة عصمة بن الحصين صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا عصيمة الأشجعي عطية بن نويرة عقبة بن عامر عقبة بن عثمان عقبة بن وهب الأنصاري عقبة بن وهب المهاجر عكاشة بن محصن عمار بن ياسر عمارة بن حزم عمارة بن زيد عصيمة الأشجعي عطية بن نويرة عقبة بن عامر عقبة بن عثمان عقبة بن وهب الأنصاري عقبة بن وهب المهاجر عكاشة بن محصن عمار بن ياسر عمارة بن حزم عمارة بن زيد اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا عمرو بن إياس عمرو بن ثعلبة عمرو بن الجموح عمرو بن الحارث المهاجر عمرو بن الحارث الأنصاري عمرو بن سراقة عمرو بن أبي سرح عمرو بن طلق عمرو بن عوف عمرو بن قيس عمرو بن معاذ عمرو بن معبد عمرو بن معبد عمير بن حرام عمير بن الحمام عمير بن عامر عمير بن أبي وقاص عنترة مولى سليم عوف بن الحارث عويم بن ساعدة عياض بن زهير اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا غنام بن أوس 
الفاكه بن بشر فروة بن عمر قتات دب قتات قتاددت قتاده ابن النعمان قدامة بن مظعون قطبة بن عامر قيس بن السكن قيس بن عمر قيس بن محصن قيس بن مخلد كعب بن جمار كعب بن زيد لبدة بن قيس مالك بن الدخشم مالك بن ربيعة مالك بن رفاعة مالك بن عمر مالك بن قدامة مالك بن مسعود مالك بن نميلة اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا مالك بن أبي خولي مبشر بن المنذر المجذر بن زياد محرز بن عامر محرز بن نضل بن نضلة محمد بن مسلمة مدلاج بن عمرو مرارة بن الربيع مرثد بن أبي مرثد مسطح بن أثاثة مسعود بن أوس مسعود بن خلدة مسعود بن خلدة مسعود بن ربيعة مسعود بن زيد مسعود بن سعد مسعود بن عبد الله بن عبد سعد مصعب بن عمير مظهر بن رافع معاذ بن جبل معاذ بن الحارث اللهم ارض عنهم وجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا معاذ بن الصمة معاذ بن عمر معاذ بن ماعص معبد بن عباد معبد بن عباد معبد بن قيس معتب بن عبيد معتب بن عوف معتب بن قشير معقل بن المنذر مع مع معمر بن الحارث معن بن عدي معن بن يزيد معوذ بن الحارث معوذ بن عمر المقداد بن الأسود مليل بن وبره المنذر بن عمر المنذر بن قدامة المنذر بن محمد مهجع, مهجع بن صالح اللهم ارض عنهم وجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله 
وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا نصر بن الحارث النعمان بن الأعرج النعمان بن سنان نعمان بن عصر نعمان بن عمر النعمان بن عبد عمر النعمان بن مالك النعمان بن أبي خزامة نعيمان بن عمر نوفل بن عبيد الله نوفل بن عبيد الله هانئ بن نيا هانئ بن نيار هبيل بن وبره هلال بن اميه هلال بن المعلى واقد بن عبد الله وديعة بن عمرو ورقة بن اياس وهب بن سعد يزيد بن الاخنس يزيد بن الحارث اللهم ارض عنهم وجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكنوا بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا يزيد بن حرام يزيد بن حرام يزيد بن رقيش يزيد بن السكن يزيد بن المنذر أبو الأسوار أبو أيوب الأنصاري أبو حبة بن ثابت أبو حبيب أبو حبيب بن زيد أبو حذيفة بن عتبة أبو الأبو حسن الأنصاري أبو الحمراء أبو حنة بن مالك أبو خارجة أبو خزيمة أبو خلاد أبو داود أبو دجانة أبو سبرة أبو سلمة أبو سليط اللهم ارض عنهم وجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا أبو سنان أبو شيخ ابن أبي ثابت أبو صرمة أبو ضياح أبو ضياح أبو طلحة أبو عبس أبو عقيل أبو قتادة أبو قتادة أبو قيس أبو كبشة أبو لبابة أبو مخشي أبو مرفد أبو مسعود البدري أبو مليل أبو المنذر أبو الهيثم أبو اليسر اللهم ارض عنهم وجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل على 
سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا طلحة بن عبيد الله الزبير بن العوام عبد الرحمن بن عوف سعد بن أبي وقاص سعد بن زيد أبو عبيدة بن الجراح صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا علي بن أبي طالب عثمان بن عفان عمر بن الخطاب أبو بكر الصديق اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم وعظم وكرم على سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد محمد بن عبد الله قائدنا وطبيبنا وقرة أعيننا وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Subhanallah, Jazakallah khairan, uh, Ghari Salaam, for that beautiful, beautiful recitation of all the names uh, that are, uh, you know, said to be uh, at the Battle of Badr. We had so many comments coming in, um, amen, you know, saying, amen. MashaAllah, such a clear voice, saying how we stand on the shoulders of these companions and uh, talking about the tears we've shed, uh, saying, may Allah bless our tears that have fallen during this program really appreciating your beautiful recitation for Amen. filling our homes with these names uh Amen. praying for you for rewards for you for a moving recitation Amen. especially as you are fasting mashallah and sister mizan saying allah preserve you Ghari Sanan, and your voice for beautifying the tribute to these great muslims and may allah bestow generous favor on you your family and your loved ones Amen. Amen. allahumma Amen. jazakum allahu khaira thank you so much that was a beautiful, beautiful recitation. I think we were all deeply moved by Ghari Sanan's uh, recitation of all these names. And there was uh, a couple questions about why there was more than 313 names. And uh, 
our uh, executive director, uh, Tariq El Misidi, who was hosting this whole time, he had to uh, jump out, but he uh, shared in the comments that there's a difference of opinion about the exact number who were at the battle. That's why there are some extra names here on the list to cover all the names uh, that are disputed. Uh, however, most scholars tend to go with the number 313. So we really greatly appreciated uh, Ghari Sanan. You can follow him on uh, YouTube and Twitter uh, to continue keeping up with his recitations, uh, inshallah. And as well, we're really grateful uh, for all of you who have been watching, who have been supporting, and who have been donating. We started uh, this session with uh, having met 15% of our Ramadan goal and now on the 17th day of Ramadan, we have met 17% uh, of our Ramadan goal. So thank you so much. Uh, we had a, a donor that uh, offered a matching grant if we reach $17,000 and we did reach $17,000 uh, today. And so we will be getting that matching grant thanks to all of your donations. However, considering it is the 17th day of Ramadan, we are still pretty far from uh, our, our goal uh, at 17%. We still do have a long way to go. So if you are able to continue supporting us, inshallah, uh, please do so by going to launchgood.com slash CM. We do have beautiful gifts for our donors who donate over $100. Uh, maybe you see a gift that you really like and you choose to support Celebrate Mercy so that you can receive that gift, uh, inshallah. As well, we do have a Zakat eligible uh, CIRA scholarship fund that you can learn more about uh, on our LaunchGood page. And you can email us if you want your funds to go uh, directly to this uh, Zakat eligible uh, fund that has helped thousands of Muslims in recent years, uh, mashallah. And I wanted to remind you all or let you know, if you didn't know, uh, the biggest prize day on LaunchGood is on the 27th day of Ramadan. So every day we're competing on contests from LaunchGood in which we can win a good amount of uh, money, but on the 27th day, the first place prize will quadruple. So if you're thinking of, uh, you know, donating a good amount of money to Celebrate Mercy, please consider uh, doing it on the 27th day of Ramadan, inshallah, as, uh, you know, your $1, $2, whatever, however many you uh, donate could help us win $20,000 extra from Launch Good at uh, taking us that much closer to our goal. Uh, so please consider uh, supporting today or any day throughout the, the month, especially on the 27th day, by going to launchgood.com slash CM, inshallah. As well, tonight we are continuing our Juz recitation and discussion with uh, Imam Nihal Khan, Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud, and Sheikh Hasib Noor. It's Juz 18 of the Quran. And as well, we have our kids series continuing today with Sheikh Aisha Prime at 6.15 p.m. Eastern. So in around an hour, uh, inshallah. And today's topic is uh, being honest. Uh, and I want to thank you for uh, joining today's session. I'm actually, I actually have two raffle wheels that I uh, I will be uh, sharing right now to see who uh, won the raffles for uh, the social media shout outs, the pictures you shared, and those who donated uh, $313 today. But first, I wanted to echo the sentiments of uh, our, our audience saying uh, uh, to like the video, let's make it at least 313 likes. Yes. Uh, please give this video a like if you have enjoyed, appreciated, and benefited from uh, today's Badr webinar. Uh, and uh, if you are not subscribed yet, please do so so you never miss a video from us. And if you turn on the notification bell, inshallah, you're informed every time that we go live, uh, which is quite a lot in this blessed month, inshallah. Uh, I'm now going to uh, transition to the raffle wheels. So as I mentioned, we have two raffle wheels uh, that we will be uh, sharing today, one for those who uh, shared their uh, pictures on social media or sent us their pictures. So if you can see here, we have the raffle wheel for those who posted pictures. So I'm going to click and, and say Bismillah. And I believe you're uh, you're winning the uh, three foot sandal, wooden sandal that uh, the Tariq showed earlier in the program. So we're going to say Bismillah and let's see who is winning today's raffle. Let's see. Judith, Judith, Judith Thomas. Mashallah, Judith, thank you so much for sharing your pictures. Uh, you know, uh, we uh, pray that you appreciate it and uh, benefited from this program. And congratulations on winning uh, the three foot sandal, mashallah. We hope you can uh, enjoy it to your benefit and that it beautifies your home. 
And as well, uh, we mentioned a, a $313 giving level today, encouraging you all to give $313 uh, for the heroes at Better. Uh, inshallah. So uh, we had this many people, mashallah, give $313 throughout the duration of today's program. So now we're going to say bismillah for them and see uh, who is going to win uh, the wooden sandal on this list, inshallah. Okay, mashallah, Muhammad Oweis, Muhammad Oweis Naeem. Congratulations, uh, Muhammad Oweis Naeem, and congratulations. Congratulations to Judith earlier. Uh, mashallah, please uh, email info at celebratemercy.com. It will be in, in the chat, info at celebratemercy.com. Some of you, when you donate on Launch Good, uh, your email is there. Some of you, it's not there. So we can't contact everyone if, um, if their email is not there. So please email us, inshallah, at info at celebratemercy.com. And just to remind you uh, once again, that uh, we will be live tonight at 11.30 p.m. Eastern um, uh, with our Imam Nihal Khan, who is reciting just for us every single night this Ramadan, Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud, who joins many nights, and uh, Sheikh Hasib Noor is joining us tonight to reflect on Juz 18 of the Quran, and as well, the kids series for your kids. If you have an, uh, if you, they have not joined yet, they can find the videos on our YouTube page or join live tonight at 6.15 p.m. Eastern. We hope you benefited from today's uh, better webinar. And once again, if you have, inshallah, give this video a like. When you like the video, it gets recommended to more people, uh, shows up on more people's uh, YouTube feeds, and inshallah, they can benefit uh, from uh, finding the video, inshallah. And subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you have not already done so. We pray you all benefited from today's webinar, inshallah, and hopefully see you all tonight uh, for the rest of our programs. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.